Welcome back to Grand Rapids, where we are headed into our fourth season, and we have one goal that I want to achieve. This needs to be the year we go out and win a bowl game, because last season we made one, but we got heavily outplayed by Wyoming, and we can't go after four or five star recruits until we win a bowl. Plus, we're also still stuck recruiting in just Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. We need to get better players to get this roster to the next level, and this year we have a new starting receiving core, but we are going to redshirt some of these freshmen, which includes converted fullback Thomas Jones, and I'd also love if we were able to win the Michigan Mac rivalry this year, which is a head-to-head -head rivalry battle between these four programs, and even though we went 6-7 and seven last year, we're projected to finish at 112, so that's frustrating, but Steven Anderson's projected to be a first-team All-American, and since we gave up so many points to Wyoming in our last bowl game, I'm hoping that freshman left end Joel Johnson can make a big difference for our defense. As for this recruiting class, we need linebackers, but we really need halfbacks, because after this season, Ryan Wilson's the only one that's going to be on our roster, so I'm going to go all-in on trying to get these four players, including Juco halfback Demarcus Perkins, because the gym could come in and instantly start for us, and he'd be one of the highest overalls that we've ever recruited, and I'd love to talk more about some of these defensive pieces that could be good depth for us, but I want to mention Terrell Smiley more. This guy might be a 64 overall, but I feel like that overall is going to jump up a ton, because not only can the athlete play on the defensive side of the ball, but he can also throw it, even if he only has 57 throw accuracy. We'll see if we're able to pull those guys in, and I don't know why we have three bye weeks to start the year again, but weeks 10 through 12 are going to be big, as that is three straight rivalry matchups for us, and remember, my only hope for this year is we win a bowl game, and we're we're going to have a pretty good chance at getting all of these halfbacks and fullbacks where Demarcus Perkins might already be in the back. We're able to schedule him plus eight other players for a visit versus Bowling Green, and going into this, we're favored because they've lost all three of their matchups, and this feels like a perfect chance to start the year right, where we need to run for over 100 yards, and there is one thing that I want to know. This is being filmed before Christmas so I can travel home and see family, so with that in mind, I haven't been able to read any of the comments from the last episode, so we'll be sticking with junior quarterback Ryan Pace over freshman Brian Johnson to start the season. Ryan Pace led us to a bowl game last year, so he deserves that, and we have an opportunity to get them off the field on this third and 10 where they're not going to pick it up. That is huge for Grand Rapids, because I love the Mastodons, but we don't normally get defensive stops, and that is a great start to our year. Now we're going to get to see Ryan Pace as a junior start his first drive where we're getting a good return beforehand, and I have to remember that we need to rush for 100 yards in this game, but sophomore Ryan Wilson already got seven, and this is going to be another five or six. I'm pretty sure that we have never started a season getting a win, and that was a terrible first pass from Ryan Pace but he's going to hit his tight end on this one. And I have a feeling that Jackson McGowan's going to finish the year as our number one receiver because he's by far our best target. We're going to hit him with a halfback draw on second down. And even if we don't pick up this third and two, I'm going to go for it. Ryan Pace is going to try to evade the pressure, but Bowling Green gets the stop. So we're resorting to running on fourth and two. And that is a beautiful block from 74. Freshman Dwayne Jackson is already making a difference. And I'm going to notice pancakes like that because we desperately need them. On second and nine, it looks like it's man-to-man -man coverage. And I see that sophomore Anthony Weber's created a ton of separation, so we've gotten onto the board first, and it is time to impress these visiting recruits. I'm still very worried about our defense because of how much it struggled last season, but we should get a sack on this play, and it took no time for sophomore free safety Steven Anderson to get involved, but they're going to pick up the third down with this run, and I shouldn't have prepared for the pass there, and even though it seems like all is going so well, I have some bad news that I will mention after we try and stop their quarterback from scrambling, and we kind of did, which is going to take us to the end of the first quarter, and unfortunately for us, Ryan Wilson is out for the rest of the game with a bruised elbow, so we'll be relying on senior running back Andrew Cardi. I think that's going to make it a lot more difficult to rush for 100 yards and impress all of the visiting recruits. They're picking up the third and four, and maybe we shouldn't be running man coverage, even though we have some new corners that we recruited on this play. We're going to force the fumble on their running back, but they were so quick to pick that ball up, and Cronin's got to make a tackle here. Rodney Cronin got flattened, though, and Flynn is not able to make one either, going to the five, so it would seem as if Bowling Green is about to tie it all up at seven to seven. We could have almost gotten a pick there, but cornerback David Conception was a a little bit too slow. And on third and goal, they're going with the pass. They're not handing it off. Their quarterback's trying to run up the middle, but we are ready for it. Let's hope that this flag isn't against us. And it wasn't as it was holding. So the Falcons are only going to get a field goal. And with our backup running back in the game, we're going to pass on this first play where look at Steven Arrington creating a ton of space and he's going to back juke for another five or 10. So we have had no issues through the air and that's a very good sign, but Andrew Carty's going to have to run for a lot still. And this one's immediately coming back on us. Slipping penalties are the worst because now it's first and 22, but Andrew Andrew Cardi sees all of the open space on the halfback pump draw, and that play finally worked again. I've been trying to get it to for episodes now, and I think our tight end's gonna beat them over the top, but he doesn't. So I'm not gonna lie, I got a little trigger happy there because we had to play work, and that's put us in a situation where it's third and 12, and Jackson McGowan is wide open. I feel so good about Grand Rapids offense right now. We have never been this solid, and Jeremy Matthews had a nice spin move there, but I would love to pass it on the second down where we go to the freshman, and the first catch of Dante Moss's career is a touchdown snag. I know that Bowling Green is 0-3, 
three, but we are performing better than we ever had in a debut. And last year's season opener versus Kent State still haunts me in all of my dreams. Our defense looks so improved from that moment as right now the Bowling Green Falcons only have three. And Lucian Anderson the third was not able to run for anything there. They're just gonna have to go to the flat on the next one where they're unfortunately breaking multiple tackles to get a lot of yards. But I'd say all is well because I trust our defense to hold them and he's taken what should have been another sack. I have to remember to put a quarterback spy out there because that's what worked for us last season. We get the sack because we did and forced a fumble. And what a play from linebacker Ricky Gamble to put his hand in there and punch that ball out. Freshman Joel Johnson recovered it and now that Ryan Pace has some time back there, we're gonna go over to Andrew Cardi. But if we're gonna get more points before the half, we're gonna have to move a little bit quicker down the field. And that's the first drop of the season. Those are expected to come, especially since he is a sophomore, but we have to get this third and three, which we do. And who is Ellis? He's our walk-on fullback that's a 42 overall. And that'll probably be the only play that he ever makes for us. We are gonna feed Weber again, though, trusting him to come down with it. And Anthony Weber has redeemed himself. Now they aren't going with man coverage, but it's cover two and Steven Arrington is wide open. We have never, ever played this well offensively. And your Mastodons are really going into the half up by 18. We also get ball to start the third quarter, so that's awesome. And the only thing we're still focused on is making sure we get 100 rushing yards because right now we're at 73 and we have to continue to impress the visiting recruits where Dante Moss is wide open in the middle of the field. I was worried about how we do without Ryan Wilson, but Andrew Cardi's been okay and he stumbles over his own feet a lot, but it's going to be all right because Moss moves the chains again and slowly but surely we will get to 100 total rushing yards. I think a jet sweep could be another opportunity to get some as Weber sees the outer edge and this one is going to go for what looks like at least 20, but he's going to break free all the way to the crib. And what a performance from Anthony Weber. We've gotten well over 100 rushing yards. We have a 25 point lead and we can pretty much seal our win with another stop where Joel Johnson's already been fantastic. He was the player that recovered that fumble near the end of the half and on this third and long, they have nothing but their flat underneath, which we're all over. And from there, we'd go on to score again. They did get to a fourth and three where they're going to get into the end zone, but it's simply too late for them to come back. So we're going to keep running out the clock and they can't even do an onside kick right. In the future, once we get up by a lot, I can show more of these games, but I feel like it makes sense to skip over most of it since we're just running down the clock. And it's all up to you all in the comments on how I handle these going forward. We've just never been in a position so far where we've had such a big lead with this much time left. And this is going to be by far our biggest win ever in school history here in season four where Andrew Cardi's going to finish it off. And I cannot believe that we just dominated that badly. This is why we're still starting junior quarterback Ryan Pace. And even without Ryan Wilson, Andrew Cardi ran the ball pretty well where he could be our starting running back in the near future. But to do so, he'd have to continue to outshine Ryan Wilson. And that was literally the perfect visit week as we got two strong safeties to commit a tackle and then four running backs that we're going to use. In the future, we're going to have no issues running the ball. And we could even play a couple of these guys at tight end potentially with Brad Jones and quarterback Pete Whitmore also committing pretty soon. Even if that's the case, I would like to continue developing sophomore Ryan Wilson. So Andrew Cardi is going to remain the backup for now. And we could really start Matt Conference play off the right way because Kent State's also 0-3. And, and going into this, we're both 70 overall. Since we have pretty much everything that we would ever need in recruiting, we've started to put coach points into game management things. And I think that's helping us perform better, which is great. But before we hop into our next game, I have to scroll through all of our new targets. And wide receiver Jeff Shelby is probably the main player to note because he has 95 speed. I'm just hopeful that Kent State doesn't embarrass us again because I'm pretty sure they scored like 58 points last year and here in Dick Stadium they are already committing false starts so they haven't even gotten a snap off yet but it's first and 15 and it's not going to matter at all. I'll never forget the name Mark Sims because him and Jaron Lewis annihilated us last year but they have a new quarterback now and I'm just gonna assume that he isn't gonna be as good but Mark Sims is still a stud so that's why you're gonna see us struggling on defense early on as he's breaking a lot of tackles but I'm so used to us never getting stops that I'm not even worried. The fact that we've gotten the golden flashes to a third and eight is amazing where Carnegie is going to take his drag and we're going to make the tackle with Robinson or maybe not, which is so unfortunate because Jamar Robinson's now a senior and we recruited him when he was a Juco. They're going over the middle and Dennis Gaston just gashed our defense for a touchdown. Well, Kent State might be 0-3, but they don't seem any worse than they were last year. So Steven Arrington on our first offensive play is making a massive one for us going for that. And can somebody check on this DB's ankles? Because I'm pretty sure they just got shattered. We are firing away already and this was a play that worked for us last week but Kent State obviously watched some film and they just sent in a blitz at us where we're going to Andrew Cardi but that is not enough to move the chain so it is third and five and Ryan Wilson was open with the halfback screen for the first. On paper our offense is actually worse from what we had last year but so far it has not seemed that way and we should have taken that hitch route. It is third and four now and we will see if they guard our tight end which they didn't do a good job of but they've spotted us short so we're running it in on fourth and one and that's a tutty. Andrew Cardi's a little vulture for that one, stealing the touchdown from Ryan Wilson.
Wilson, and is there nobody on the right side of the field to stop their quarterback from scrambling? Oh my gosh. Devin Kargman looks way too comfortable back there, especially taking all of these handoffs. But now I've remembered to put some quarterback spies out there, and RJ Davis is getting into the backfield. The sophomore didn't develop that much this offseason, but evidently he has worked on some stuff, and we are going to hold them on third down. But evidently they have a good kicker because they're attempting this, and it's down the middle. That's how the first quarter is going to end for us, and I'm ready to have some more success on offense, but we didn't get the best blocks. But I cannot complain about getting five rushing yards. And on third and three, we need Ryan Pace to not miss his target, which he doesn't. That was a big issue that we ran into a ton last season. And another issue we ran into was wide receivers dropping balls into interceptions. Luckily, we haven't seen that yet, but I should probably knock on wood. There's the bad pass. But I think we should be aggressive going for it here on fourth and two, where the drag is open to freshman Arnie Hicks. And he immediately got hurt by getting tackled there. But that's a sacrifice that'll hopefully be worth it for the team. And what are you doing, Ryan? I don't get as a junior how he still misses his target that badly sometimes, but Ryan Wilson is fighting. Setting up a third and six for us where Andrew Cardi is open on the right side of the field and he is going to pick this one up plus a bit more. Just like last season, we honestly have a pretty solid halfback duo and that made a big difference for us carrying us to a bowl game. Now we have Moss open on the left side of the field, but he's not getting the touchdown as he went down at the one yard line. And I don't know how Ryan Wilson didn't make it in on that last play, but it's all good because he has eventually reached the end zone. And Joel Johnson getting that TFL there is a massive deal. Our defense is literally holding Kent State now and I've even taken taking a timeout so we can hopefully get the ball back before the half, which ended up being the right move because we have it again. And on this one, we're getting it out in time to our tight end, who's going to somehow get a first down. It looked a little glitchy, but I'm not going to question it. Now Ryan Pace is going to miss his throw. And this is where we're going to trust the corner routes to get open, but they were prepared for it and we're throwing it away. The Kent State defense might get us off the field if Ryan Wilson can't pick this up, but they were not prepared for the halfback screen and he has a blue face. But that's simply how cold our sophomore running back is keeping this drive alive. We haven't even mixed in a run yet, which they probably were not expecting. But with time running down in the half, that's not what you want to do and what just happened. Everybody's looking a little flustered out there. I don't think any of them all expected us to be this good. Clemens isn't reaching the marker and we're going to burn our final timeout. That's going to give everybody a chance to settle down and Dante Moss is doing amazing for a freshman. He's had zero issues when it comes to getting open like here. And did Ryan Pace really just hit this throwing window? His development has been insane, but we're going to miss the extra point, which could come back to bite us in the end. They just can't score. And as long as they don't get a field goal before the half, I'll be happy, which seems likely we just don't want to give up anything deep, and that is perfectly fine. We all know that their kicker has range, so that's why I am a little bit concerned, and there it is. Steven Anderson can't guard both seams, so it's 20 to 13, and that is an unfortunate way to end the second quarter, but at the same time, we can't be upset because we have been playing exceptionally well offensively, and this is a great example with Ryan Wilson. We have never gotten blocks this well when it comes to running the ball, and on second and 11, I think it's best if we force feed it to Jackson McGowan, but he's not able to hang on. The half back screen worked for us on third down in the first half though, so I was hoping it would here in the second. It doesn't look like it's going to. And Kent State is getting the ball back, but Clement had some good punts last year, so I'm hoping this one can be another one, and that bounces inside the seven. Our defense has been set up for success on this drive, but Rodney Cronin couldn't get to that ball. And he's a converted cornerback to strong safety, so he is still learning that position. We're going to be able to force the fumble, but they recover. And that is something that our defense seems to be doing a lot of, but they simply had too much time on this play. And if all they get out of us not generating pressure as three yards, I will definitely take it. Once again, Joel Jackson makes a great play, and the freshman is going off, making this a third and eight where we stop him. I'm telling you all, we are so much more complete as a team this year, and it is starting to get dark here at Kent State Stadium, so it has quickly turned into a night game where our tight end is open, but Ryan Pace couldn't get it out. That's painful, because unless we have a miracle on this third and 20, I highly doubt that we're going to pick it up, but did Anthony Weber seriously just do that? The sophomore just channeled his inner Odell Beckham Jr., and the fact that we picked that up is crazy, but the read options locked up. And the only way that ever works for us is if we're able to hand it off. But now we should probably look back in Anthony Weber's direction and he is not open, but Moss is. So Grand Rapids football legitimately looks solid right now. And I am so glad because before this, we had some very rough moments. Now we're in a position where we could be starting this season 2-0. Andrew Carty got boxed up. But every time Ryan Pace drops back to pass the ball, things seem to go our way until this play. And that could have been his first interception of the year, but it wasn't. So we're very thankful. And look at Moss not holding on. That means we're going to have to attempt a 49 yarder with Myron Cooper where it is in and I didn't know the sophomore could hit from there but that is a big deal because it keeps us in a two possession lead where Joel Johnson just got another sack. He is going off in this game and he's trying to get his third which he does so the freshmen's come out and set a school record and I would be so upset if they picked up this third and 16 which they're not going to do. We have the ball back again and full control of this game but we still need to make sure we finish it off and Ryan Wilson's going to try and get the outer edge. This is a third and two that I might go for if we're not able to pick it up but we still do and he stumbled for a bit.
getting us past midfield. And at this point in the game, we should probably turn on two clock so we can start running out more of it because we're about to be in field goal range again and Andrew Cardi has got to turn on the Jets. If he was a bit quicker, that probably would have been a house call for us. But I cannot complain because we've held Kent State to 13 points and comparatively to the 58 they put up last year, this is a massive deal. That's going to be another touchdown. And at this point in the game, they would need a miracle to come back on us. I don't think we're generating enough pressure, but we're going to deliver the hammer, forcing out the fumble. Rodney Cronin picks this up and can you believe how well our defense has played? I am so fired up to see how the rest of our season goes now because not only could we win a bowl game, not only could we win the Michigan Mac, but maybe just maybe we could win the conference ourselves and also beat one of the bigger Michigan schools. I mean, we've dominated in our first two matchups and there's no telling when that's going to stop, especially since Ryan Pace is playing so well and we have multiple different receivers that can get it done. Right now, we're sitting at the top of our division with Eastern Michigan, but unfortunately, next on our schedule is Notre Dame, so our run of success is probably about to end. Even though we've beaten Notre Dame in our last two matchups, the Irish are better than ever and they're going to want to get revenge, but every time we play them, it has been a classic, so I'm hoping for the best. And on second and 11, we're just going to go over to Ryan Wilson where he's going to get nowhere. Hopefully that warmed up Ryan Pace enough to make this throw on third and 12, but he fumbles it instead, and this is not the start that I was hoping for versus the Irish as they get in. I literally don't think that could have gone worse for us. We are only a few plays into the game, and Ryan Pace has got to hit his target. He has Steven Arrington here, but he's going to sail the throw, and we're about to get held to another three and out where they're sending a blitz, and I guess we're lucky that this time he didn't fumble it, but our defense is going to need to clutch up, and they have done that in previous matchups. This was a really good bounce on the punt, but Kenny Minchie's at the helm now, and we're used to facing off against Steve Angeli. It looks like he can actually hit his throws, and every time we've beaten the Irish, they've been like three and four, so the fact that they're a top 18 team and they are two and one makes this so much more difficult. That's another first down, and this could potentially get really ugly quick for us, but we're shown a little bit of resistance, which is nice, and freshman Drew Flynn's knocking him down. That makes it third and 14 for the Irish. Surely they're not going to pick this up. We just have to generate a little bit more pressure than what we have, and that's going to the end zone where it's caught or dropped. I thought for a second he reeled that in, but we were fortunate to knock it out of his hands, holding them to a field goal, and this has got to be the drive where we come alive and start to score some points, but that pass to Steven Arrington was a setup for failure, so at least this one he's able to reel in, building his confidence back up and moving the chains for us against the Irish. All we had was a slow start, but now we're starting to get back into a groove against them, and I'm going to let Anthony Weber get loose with this end around where there wasn't much room for him to go into. We're probably just lucky that we didn't lose yards, and I don't think Ryan Pace is getting the ball out. So it is third and seven where we have the drag, but Weber drops it, and he made that one-handed catch last week, but not this time, and that play just wasn't pretty in general. At least we're going to be able to pin the Irish back inside the two, but unfortunately, the ball did not bounce the way that I thought it was about to, and this has got to be intercepted. Steven Anderson could have changed the game, and I'm going to be so salty about that for a very long time if they're able to score. However, if we're able to hold them, so be it, and on third and nine, that's what's going to happen here. So we might have zero points to end the first quarter, but I don't feel like we're out of it yet, and we just got to get it going. This is where we could really use some of the stars that were on our offense last year, but now we have players like Anthony Weber, and over time, I'm sure he'll develop to be somebody that's even better, but we've definitely had a downgrade at running back, and they cannot stay in man-to-man -man coverage on Anthony Weber. If we need to, I will continue to look in his direction, and over the middle of the field, we're going to have Ernie Hicks. So we have gotten down into the Irish's red zone, and we need Ryan Pace to step up big time in this situation. I'm not going to lie, whenever we pass, I'm a little afraid that he's going to turn it over, but we're going to have to do it on third down, and are you kidding me? Man-to-man -man coverage? Dante Moss has been doing a great job of destroying it all year, so I'll give him a chance to come away with it, and now they're trying to run with Price, but it's not going anywhere, and I don't know what it is about Notre Dame, but we always find a way to keep it close. That drop could haunt us on third and nine. Hopefully Kenny Minchie can't get this throw out, but their corner route has dusted multiple of our DBs, and that is a major problem. Just bring him down. And we're midway through the second quarter now. It looks like they're going back with the option. Jamarian Price is going to catch it. We're not getting over to him. It's all coming down to Steven Anderson, who is not able to make the tackle. And that was a rough two plays for Grand Rapids. Now they're about to sack us, but it ended up being okay. Ryan Pace is carrying himself very well, as we're also going to find Jackson McGowan. And to keep this game as tight as possible, you know what I'm about to say. This must be the final drive of the first half, but I don't know if it will be because they've gotten us to a third and eight, but Ernie Hicks is going to hold on and redshirting him last year was a great decision for us because it gave him more time to develop and now we're going to try and bomb them over the top to Jackson McGowan who comes down with it. We have had a mossed catch go in our favor and to stay in this game, that is exactly what we needed against Notre Dame. Now we're going to get the interception with the freshman and those two plays have changed everything. Drew Flynn just read Kenny Minchie like a book and now is not the time to be having drops. We're going right back to Jackson McGowan, but Bell picks off Ryan Pace for his first interception of the 
this season and are you kidding me let's hope that this flag somehow brings it back and it will but it's still the irish's ball and it's all because ryan pace didn't anticipate that linebacker jumping up like that we got a little too confident there trying to throw it into some tight windows we get the sack of course coming from joel johnson and that'll take us to the end of the first half but we have blown an opportunity because we could have taken a lead on notre dame and now they get ball to start the third quarter where they had somebody wide open but kenny minchie didn't see him over the middle of the field and on second and 10 he is going to which is a little unfortunate that gets them onto our side of the field where this run isn't going to go anywhere and i am so glad that we're clamping up in this situation but minchie kept the ball making it a third and manageable for the irish where he's going to try and scramble and we couldn't get over to him in time and he's fighting for even more yards i wish i could consistently remember to put a quarterback spy out there on every single play because we did it here and they shouldn't have even gotten five yards but at least we were able to stop him short which might not matter because they're about to reach the end zone anyway and our defensive tackle just hurt us i had zero control over it he just jumped before the play and on second down we're trying to get into that hole but kenny menji kept it so he is going to put his team back up by two possessions and we're in a lot of trouble if we can't score on this drive we're already down by two possessions so that's why we need it so desperately but the notre dame defense is doing a good job of clamping up and i can't believe i just tried to scramble with ryan pace but it's a bad habit on third and ten errington's gonna come away with it and i have no idea how we just picked that up but i am not gonna complain at all under pressure with the game on the line we have players that can make big time plays but even though we had somebody open we couldn't throw it because ryan pace slipped on the ground and because of the rain we are in a third and 11 situation where that crossing route might not be open they have somebody over there and yeah that's what i was expecting we had to try and move the chains there but now we're getting burnt on this side of the field with miller the juco corner and that is bad they're going to the five if they reach the end zone we're going down by three possessions but kenny minchie just slid for no reason and now it's third down where they're going with the handoff again and we had somebody there but it's not going to matter and i am afraid that our upset hopes against notre dame for the third year in a row are over we're gonna try and get one more playoff before the end of the third quarter where we pick up the first but the issue has been we've had two turnovers and there's nothing that ryan pace can do about it now he's been trying to keep the game alive by forcing it into windows but he was bound to make mistakes at some point and that's a sack with where that ball was about to go that's probably best case scenario but ernie hicks is wide open on the left side of the field to save us and here's our opportunity to get back into it late we're going with four verticals ryan wilson gets nowhere so we need to go for a big play and i think it's cover two so we should have moss but both of their db stuck with him and i'm starting to learn on these sliders that there are some windows that you're just not able to fit balls into that you would be able to on base heisman if notre dame was going to play it smart they're just going to run out the rest of the clock and i guess we can be hopeful that we hold them on this third and four but we're not going to in the end the irish finally got some revenge on us and it's about time that they have a good team again but it's also unfortunate because it's the first time ryan pace has lost to them and our offense looked terrible now all i want to do is play against our rival central michigan but first we have to take on three and one northern illinois and they're looking to give us our first mac conference loss but hopefully they aren't able to do that and everybody else that wants to come on a visit is going to come versus central michigan there's not many exciting updates because all of these guys are just going to be depth pieces for us but i should also mention that we landed pete whitmore and brad jones finally now that i think about it last year the huskies destroyed us and i think they won like 41 to 13 so we need to make sure that we come out playing as well as possible and here at hulu stadium it is pouring down pretty hard in grand rapids i'm not sure if that's going to help or hurt us but we can't hit this throw so it is already third down and ryan pace is going to step up to find his running back over the middle of the field it's ryan wilson so even if he can't get things going on the ground he can do it through the air and right now he's averaging negative three yards per play our tight end is open but it's another bad pass and ryan pace's struggles are so frustrating because now we have to pick up this third and long and we're not going to i wish he would just come out playing better but this punt is not going to bounce the way that we need it to so robinson's going to have to try and run to get back to this ball and he is not going to make it in time nevin cream gave us a lot of problems last season and i remember that name because it was so long and hard to pronounce but we might have a bigger issue in lawrence mclaughlin as well he's like a 6-4 running back but they just used him as a decoy on that one and just like they did to us we're forcing them to a three and out so i think that's a big deal but mcdade is struggling to run around and get this ball i don't know what he was doing there but i was panicked because of the rain and thankfully we still picked it up so far neither of our offenses have looked very solid and why is ryan wilson so slow he's normally quicker than that and now we have to convert on this third and eight which we do to Stephen Arrington so that's nice and all but I really want to get our running game going and we finally got the blocks that we needed to go for a big one I have to remember to stay patient and not go away from it too soon because all it takes is one big one and they just shot that gap really well on third and seven my hot read is Jackson McGowan up the middle but he got boxed up and Ryan Pace took the sack so my goal is to try and hit those cheerleaders on the sidelines with this punt and that wasn't a great one what's important is Lawrence McLaughlin doesn't get things going but they just got so many perfect blocks and nobody's coming close to tackling him and he is way too quick for any of us to
to catch him. That is so unfortunate. Last year, he was battling through injury, so we only had to face off against him for a bit. But now that he's fully healthy, we have to face off against him. And I'm not sure how Northern Illinois convinced him to commit to their school because as a sophomore, he's a 91 overall. But that's also with coordinator boost, and he must have had a very good offseason in his first year. Ryan Pace is kind of selling for us on second and 10. We aren't going to have enough time to get this one out. And I'm going to be so sad if they hold us on this third down where Stephen Arrington drops it. The rain is helping Northern Illinois a ton. And I'm afraid that we just played two very weak opponents in our first two matchups because we no longer look as solid. And that punt was picked up perfectly by Armstrong to go all the way past midfield. I was delusional enough to think we were about to pin them inside the five yard line and Gabe Henderson gets them the first down. So it's been a pretty rough first quarter and I am ready for this run up the middle, which we shot the gap perfectly. But Lawrence McLaughlin is so big that he still got six yards and thankfully he just stumbled over. That should have been a house call for the Huskies and I don't know what to do defensively against him, but maybe run committing will work and that's what we did, but he's just going to hit it to the outside. This is setting up to be another blowout loss to the Huskies, but we can't embarrass ourselves in front of our home crowd and we're not struggling because of turnovers since we haven't had any yet. But just the fact that our offense is struggling to score versus the Huskies and come on Arrington. I mean, I'll take the first down, but I was hoping that would have gone for a lot more. We're going back in his direction though. And finally, we are starting to have a little bit of success, but we get sacked. So it is second and 20, which is a massive problem. All I can do is dump it off to Ryan Wilson and he did the best that he could there. But it is still a third and 14, a third and long where we might have the seam up the middle, but Ryan Pace misses another one. We've seen our sophomore kicker hit a 49 yarder in the past and this one is just good, but we needed more than a field goal there. I was hoping for the touchdown and I think we've been cooked. Look at Fred Miller getting toasted on that deep post route. At least he's going to make the tackle. But the Juco corner has not had a good year and I would love to stop the run where Joel Anderson's going to get a tackle for loss. That's a pretty big deal to force this third and 12 where they're not picking it up, but some bad news popped up as we hold them to a field goal. Once again, Ryan Wilson's out for the game with a strain back, and I was so excited to see the sophomore develop, but he has had a season where he's just gotten injured multiple times. Andrew Carty isn't the worst replacement in the world, which is a good thing. We're going with the deep post over the Stephen Arrington to come away with 30, but every time our passing attack has looked this solid, something stalled out, so I'm waiting for that. I mean, it's been kind of impressive how we've picked apart this defense, but the fade route didn't work, and this is not going to either. I can guarantee that if we don't reach the end zone here, we are going to go for it on fourth and goal. And that is very unfortunate because I thought we could punch it in, but we're going to make sure this is the final play of the first half. And come on, Andrew Cardi, that is a big deal. Even if we didn't hit the extra point and Steven Anderson is going to make sure that he stops Lawrence McLaughlin. That level of defensive effort from him was honestly remarkable and they're only getting a few now. So it is third and six where I have two players in man-to-man -man coverage on this right side of the field. I left him open, but it's not going to matter because he was out of bounds and back on the return is strong safety senior Mitchell McDade. That's who we're using all year. And I wish he was just a little bit quicker because I think it would have had a chance to go to the crib, but it's okay. Andrew Cardi takes it and we can try to fool them that we're running the ball, but I think it's time we fully rely on passing it. Jackson McGowan has one route and it is a streak. He always comes open on it. That's a good throw, but I'm not sure if it was inbound. So we are hurrying it up as quick as possible. We get the snap off and that's going to count no matter what now. To make sure that we keep them honest, I am going to mix in this run to Andrew Cardi getting the first and Ernie Hicks is on a corner route where he is wide open in the end zone. So with the two-pointer, we could tie it all up going right back to him, but he dropped it. There wasn't even anybody near him, which makes that super frustrating. And to stop this run, I am stacking the box, but I don't know if it's going to make much of a difference. I feel like we have no choice but to send an all-out blitz on third and inches. And I even ran commit alongside it, but Lawrence McLaughlin's just too big, and that's another one. I am not looking forward to facing off against him the next few years. And they have not passed the ball once on this drive, but the backup's in. So we've gotten them to a third and four where they tried to pitch it to the out side over there, but we can make a tackle. And that's something that we couldn't do last season. However, after jumping off sides, they're going for it on fourth and inches. And I had no control over that. I just see the ref throwing the flag. And that is so frustrating because it's kept their drive alive where they're throwing it off of their back foot and getting five yards somehow. If there's anything I've learned from this game, it's to not sim any clips, not the extra points, not the returns, not anything. And thankfully we're getting bailed out right back, making this a third and 12 to end the third quarter. And they're not getting anywhere. Let's hope that that's out of their kickers range. And it is, so they still have to punt it back to us, where Maxwell did a decent job, and they are not guarding this seam up the middle of the field. Jackson McGowan has literally ran one route all season for us, and we're going to try to hit him on it again if they give it up, but they were prepared. If we could make this a fourth and manageable, I would love to go for it. I think a drag to our backup tight end, Kelvin Hackett's going to be the smart decision, but there is a flag on the play, and are you kidding me? It's clipping. That is so frustrating. We're going to try and do a halfback screen on third down, but it isn't going anywhere. So I think it's the last time that we try that. And it's going to be on our defense to stop Northern Illinois and their heavy rushing attack, but they've done a decent job in this game.
game and that punt is bouncing right where we wanted it to. Armstrong's going to pick it up and go down with this tackle. So now we just have to come out ready to stop the run against them. And at this rate, I'm expecting them to go for it on almost every play. They'll have to pass in this situation though. And I'm trying to generate some pressure with Gamble. They're going to get it out to Johnson in time. And are you kidding me? We had them locked up a chance to get the ball back. And now Kremiscoli is going to escape the pocket and rush for a first down on us. So that drop point two conversion is hurting us even more now. So it should be all tied up and they are going to resort to passing, but Kremiscoli saw the open lane and he's going to take it himself. We're going to have to start burning timeouts and I'm just going to run commit and hope for the best where we got in there. So now it's second and eight where I stack the box, but I figured they'd probably do something like try to pass and they cannot scramble on us again. Are you kidding me? He picked that up plus a lot more yardage. This guy is going off here at the end and the fumble out of bounds is going to give us a chance still, but these run commits have got to pay off and I'm ready for them to pass for it on third and 11. They don't want to run it down. They want to go for the first, but what they've done is give us a chance to have a game winning touchdown. And this is an amazing opportunity for Grand Rapids. So it is time for Ryan Pace to step up and we're going to hit our tight end on a corner route, which is not a streak. That's got to catch them by surprise. And we're beaming it right back to him on the next one. And if he is the only read we make on this drive, so be it. I should have just taken the slant early on. Hicks is going to go out of bounds and that gives our team a chance to have some rest, but I don't know who's out there right now. So now it is third and three where I like that comeback route over on the right side of the field, but Steven Arrington dropping the ball is a big deal, making this a fourth and three where we're going to pick it up. I trusted freshman Dante Moss to hang on, and I'm going to take him on this curl route for the next one. So we're shredding this Northern Illinois defense, and Andrew Cardi's wide open. I was not expecting us to have success this quickly, and this is a two-pointer that we are going to need to pick up. I'm waiting for our tight end to come around, but I just realized how much time we left Northern Illinois on the clock, and that is not good. Thankfully, the refs are going to help us out, but they still have 44 seconds to move it, and come on, we have got to lock up on Johnson. We then get hit with another encroachment penalty, but I have faith in our defense. We can't let anything happen deep, and I don't know why our defensive tackles have been struggling so much to stay onside in this game. Come on. They've still got a long way to go if they're going to make field goal range, and that's not going to be much. So I'd like to think we're good, but we could always give up something deep, and Kremiscoli is trying to scramble. We are ready for that. This has been such a hard-fought one. If we lose on a Hail Mary, I would be so depressed, but that ball is not reaching the end zone. And we just took down 3-1 and one Northern Illinois. Ryan Pace really is the truth. And we got that one without Ryan Wilson as well because Jackson McGowan went off. And this is the best start that we've ever had in school history. With our success, we also landed a few more recruits, including wide receiver Jeff Shelby, who's the guy with 95 speed. And we still have all of these guys on our board, which we're most likely going to get. But I also added Nick Barnes and Richard Horton. I'm super excited for the Mac rivalry to start this week. And an hour south from us, Eastern and Western are playing, where for the first time, the Broncos aren't going to win against Eastern. And this means somebody new could take home the Mac trophy. Freshman Robert Davis help the Eagles come out on top, and he could be a big problem over the next four years. But all we can do is worry about Central Michigan, who I know that we have beaten every single season, so I'd love to continue our ownership over the program in this one today, but that's a rough start, with Ryan Wilson going absolutely nowhere, and they have sent in a blitz that's going to lead to a stop. It is third and ten now, and I'm going to take this one to Moss, assuming he's able to come down with it. So Dante keeps the drive alive for us, but we have a long way to go. I'm trying to be as patient as I can with Ryan Wilson, who always starts off slow, and maybe he'll pick up this third and six with the halfback screen, but they are all over it. So we're going to pass it over to Weber instead. And I can't believe it worked, but it actually did. And after that loss of four, we're going to pass right back to Anthony Weber, who is going to spin out that cornerback. And I think he's going to make it inside the red zone. I love how well our receivers can play at times. Andrew Carty's taking this halfback toss. He's not getting the outer edge and he just fumbled it. That is definitely not what you want to see. Burt Emanuel Jr. is going to shed that tackle and then another one. And we've never faced off against him. So we're going to see if he's difficult to stop today where he just stumbled over. I know we're going to need a quarterback spy on third and four where they're going over to the left side and Minky Jenkins is a very familiar name as he's their halfback that's broken off some big runs against us but all we can do is trust our defense and on this one he gets a few more. It is now third and four and I've only sent two players at the quarterback it didn't matter because our coverage didn't stick and they're not having any success running against us. That is a positive takeaway that we can have but I just bit down way too low with Anderson. I didn't mean to stumble over with him and if you watch that back you'll notice that he did before the play which made that happen. I was preparing for the run which we've been very aggressive when it comes to stopping. And since we've never lost to Central Michigan, we cannot do that this year, especially since we have a decent chance at winning the Michigan MAC trophy since Western Michigan already lost, and that's a nice game, but the refs are going to immediately take it back. So shout out to Steven Arrington for the clipping penalty, and that pass goes nowhere. We are going to try that again because I think we would have had them deep if we just took the shot. Ryan Peace is going to set his feet over the top, and that is what I was hoping for. Arrington makes up for it. It took four years, but we can finally use play action to have success. And what a sack from our defense. I'm telling you, I don't know what it is about Central Michigan, but whenever we face off against them, 
them. I have no fears because we own them. And they're also one and four, so it's not like they're very good. On third and 14, they're gonna try and pick it up, but we knock it away. And Fred Miller should have had that interception. Since we get the ball back though, I'm not worried about it. And I'm gonna try to do something with Ryan Pace I never would. I'm scrambling for a first. And Central Michigan is in a lot of trouble when Ryan Pace is pulling off stuff like that. Hackett's gonna come away with a 10 yard, 11 yard gain. And the backup tight end's actually been a pretty solid piece for us. We're gonna have another deep shot to an open receiver. And Ernie Hicks held on to that one. So we are playing with more confidence than ever before. And Central Michigan's gonna get this first down. But I'm not even worried about it because I can trust our defense to hold their offense on this drive as we were all over that halfback screen and we should have stopped the halfback draw on the next one. But it's all good. We're gonna send in our first blitz of the day and that should stop the run. You'd think that they'd punt in this situation, but they wanna go for it on fourth and one and Anderson wasn't over there again. So when he's playing as a deep safety, he needs to do a better job. And if his coverage in this game was better, I'm not sure they'd have any points on us. Here on third and four, I'm gonna try to bait them in throwing to their tight end, but we're gonna force the sack and then we're gonna take a timeout. So we get the ball back with two minutes left in the first half. And who would have thought that we could have had this good of a start to season four? Obviously, there's still plenty of time left, so we need to make sure that we take care of business, but they can't stop us. And the only reason we're not picking stuff up is our own fault. I cannot believe that ball was dropped, making this a third and 10 where Arrington is not getting the first down. And I admit, we got a little bit cocky, which is a slight issue, but it's against our rivals, so we need to be confident. Like Pete Carroll said, games are not won in the first, second, or third quarter. They're won in the fourth quarter, so a lot of this doesn't matter. And thankfully, that play's coming back, where there have seemingly been an overload of penalties in this season compared to some previous ones. And that's on both my end and the CPUs. I didn't stay out there on Mickey Jenkins, and we were in man coverage, so that's my fault, but we almost forced the sack, and we could have picked that as well. Third and three, where they are not going to try and run, they're going to pass, and everything is clamped up. But despite all of that, they still caught this football, and they better not get points out of this drive because of it. That would be so frustrating. That is three plays now in a row where you'd think that we'd have an interception, but we didn't get it. And I am ready to send the heat on this third and inches where we get in the pressure, but Conception got burned again. I don't know why, but he seems to be struggling when it comes to putting his hands up. And you gotta love the fact that Joel Johnson just got another sack this season, but Javorian Wembley's gonna come away with the first, and Central Michigan's very close to scoring, which is why another penalty, this time being a false start, was a big deal, but Makai Jenkins was still able to take it in. And who would have thought that going into the half, we would be trailing? That half did not end the way that I thought it would. And for some reason, I thought we got ball to start the third quarter. But since we don't, we could be going down by two possessions. And I'm going to send the house on this third and three with Steven Anderson, which was the right decision. We're getting the ball back with a chance to take a lead on this drive, but they've gotten in pressure. And I don't know why I thought Ryan Pace was going to be able to evade it, but it's not going to matter. He moves the chains for us on the next play and Ryan Wilson has nothing. But at some point we have got to establish the run and we can't. Ben Fowler made it so much simpler for us and that's a bad throw. So we're going to have to punt it back to Central Michigan. And what are our guys wearing over there on the sideline? Lines. These pants do not match our on-field product, and I don't know how I noticed a small detail like that, but we have got to focus on getting a defensive stop, and Steven Anderson just got tripped up by his own teammates, so they're getting a huge run on us, which stinks, because if it wasn't for this, it probably could have been prevented. We're only trailing by three, though, so it's not the end of the world. We get the sack, and shout out to TJ Davis for generating some pressure there on this second and 16. We're just going to knock a down Burt Emanuel Jr., and I've got a quarterback spy out there for when he inevitably tries to run, but he passed it, so I I guess Central Michigan's okay with settling for three. And our only touchdowns both came off a big play, so I guess we should look for some more of those. But that did not work, and on second and ten, I'm gonna thread the needle over to Hicks, who came away with the football. And to be completely honest, I thought Ryan Pace just threw an interception. Now we have Ryan Wilson finding the outer edge. That was a halfback dive that he decided to take, and this is going to the one or the three. I might be a bit blind, and I got super excited. But it's still very close, and Andrew Cardi isn't getting in. So we have got to pass it on third and goal, and that's going to Steven Arrington but it's intercepted. Are you serious? I feel like I have to challenge this because it could have hit the ground and we'll see what the refs say because from this angle, it looks like it did. And if I slow it down, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But the refs were not willing to overturn it and now Central Michigan's picking up a first down. I'm scared that this could be the first time we lose to our rivals because it's not looking good. And what a rough ending to the third quarter. We have to assume that they're gonna continue to go with the run, but they tried to pass and that's gonna have to be a sack where I don't know who gets credit for it, but that's not important. What is, is that we get them off the field and we're going to. And this time we cannot have any costly turnovers like we had on that last drive. Ryan Wilson's trying to get another big run for us. And I wish that he was a little bit quicker. This halfback screen out to him should go for a big gain because they were not expecting it. 69 makes a great block. And I think he's gonna take this one to the crib to put us up by one point. Last season, the halfback showed flashes as a freshman, but he couldn't fully take over.
over because we had senior Ben Fowler, and now he is starting to look amazing. We need a quarterback spy out there, though, on every play. And now I'm remembering to set it, but they're going to get a nice run with Mickey Jenkins. So we can't only expect the pass, and on second and three, Bart Emanuel Jr. tried to escape the pocket, which he successfully did. So what's the point of even having a quarterback spy out there? I know for a guaranteed fact that I set one on that play, and I don't think middle linebacker freshman Drew Flynn's been getting enough credit for what he's done, as he's immediately replaced Tremaine Wayne this year and looked pretty solid in the process. We are going to get another sack, and our defense is all over Burt Emanuel Jr. That literally changes everything and could have just won us the game because they are punting us the ball, and I'm going to let it bounce into the end zone. So all we need is one first down to seal our win, and Ryan Wilson has pulled off multiple big runs. This one's going to go to the right side of the field, and they're not going to catch him. Well, they would, but it wouldn't be in time, so I'm pretty sure we can run out the rest of the clock, and if not, get it pretty close, so we're going to have to seal it with one more first down, and look at him go on this defense. He's really struggled this year, so it's nice to see some breakaway runs in this win, and it was very close, but we have come out on top of another one, so our ownership of our rival Central Michigan has continued, and that is all thanks to Ryan Pace once again, who had some solid support from Ryan Wilson in this one, but he had to hook up with all the receivers. The win over our rivals with all these players visiting is going to seal five more commitments to Grand Rapids, and we needed a ton of halfbacks, so the fact that we're going to have five of them is insane. Buffalo's the only other undefeated team in conference play, and one of their two losses came to an FCS school, plus two of their best players are injured, and them having issues like that helps us because we have to play them on the road, and I don't enjoy whenever it's raining like this. If we can get the right result, we could literally win the MAC Conference Championship, and on second and six, Richie Watts is going to find Yancey to get close to the marker, but it's still third and inches for them, and I was ready for the run. I'm telling you all, our defense is so special compared to what we had to deal with last season, and I'm hoping we get off to a good start where I didn't mean to throw that ball, but it worked out, setting up a third and one where Steven Arrington's going to get the outer edge and get the first down. This is the type of offensive start that you want to see from us, but they were prepared for the run, so now we're going to drop back and pass it, and I guess they were ready for that too. I should know better than to try to force it on a third and 20 early on in the game. It normally results in an interception, but we're still going to go for it, and unfortunately, he was out of bounds, but it's a long game, and we're playing the field positioning one where we should stop Buffalo here, and as long as Richie Watts isn't able to find anybody that's open, we're going to be just fine. Third and 10 now, where I probably should have stuck with the tight end over on that corner route, but I trusted our flat too, and I hate the fact that they just moved the chains on us. We're trying to get more pressure in on Ricky Watson. He was able to escape plus get extra yardage, so the senior having experience is paying off for him, and I thought that we picked that off, but apparently we didn't. The Bulls drive is going to continue down our throats, and freshman George Cunningham didn't go anywhere there. We are ready for that, so it is third and seven where I'm going to play the flat, and I almost could have gotten a pick, but Richie Watts didn't get the throw out, and Buffalo is scoring the first points of the game potentially, but it's only a field goal, so I'm not worried in the slightest, and from what I've seen so far, this is a very winnable matchup, but we're going to need some better play calling in the second quarter, and all we have to do is pick up this third and six to keep the chains moving, but it's a bad throw. Ryan Pace has so many good moments, but he also makes mistakes, and come on, you can break one tackle, but you're not breaking three, and George Cunningham has been complete garbage against us, but the freshman is going to finally break one free, and we were not able to make the tackle with Gamble. Why did I even say that? I literally just jinxed us for no reason as he scored, and it was almost instantly after I said it, but they missed the extra point, so it's 9-0, to zero, and we need Ryan Pace to pull this off. I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty ugly. Now we're going over the middle of the field, and Johnson put his hands up just in time to pick that ball off, where it was put like five yards behind our intended target, and if Ryan Pace put that where it needed to be, Jackson McGowan would have been able to pull it in, but of course Joel Johnson gets another sack, and I can always trust him to clutch up for our defense as it's now gonna be third down, and we are ready to get them off of the field, but Richie Watts is gonna roll out, and come on, let's just get the sack. The second our offense comes alive, we're gonna be just fine, but it needs to happen at some point since we're midway through the second quarter, and did we seriously just fumble that? I know it was picked up by our own team, but stuff like that can simply not happen. And on third and one, I am willing to take our check down underneath if it results in us moving the chains, which it does, and I think we're gonna have to give up on trying to establish the run, but Ryan Pace has also missed his targets in this game so far, and I didn't like anything on this one. Here on third and eight, that route from Dante Moss should get open as long as we have enough time to get it out, but Buffalo got the pressure in, so even though we had the first down, we're gonna have to punt it back to them again because the throw didn't get out in time. And seeing our offense perform like this makes me so sad because our defense is actually doing their job for the most part. The only mistake they made in this matchup was giving away that big run to George Cunningham, but we just forced the sack on Buffalo, and there's no way they pick up this third and ten, so we're gonna take a timeout, and it is about time that we start to have some success on offense. A good return would be the start of it, and I think McDade's gonna get it to around the 40 or the 35, but as you can see, nobody's had a good game so far, so we are gonna need them to step up in this situation, and that's why we're going to our highest overall player. I'm also 
also going to keep an eye on the clock so we don't score too quickly. But that was a rough loss there on first down. So now we're going back to Ryan Wilson. Let him make up for it with the halfback screen and he is going to. For such a terrible first half, we are not out of this. And I'm expecting them to simply run the ball and take it to the half where Cunningham's going to come away with a 15-yard gain. But we trust Steven Anderson to make open field tackles and I have guarded all of their hitches. This could be picked off. But Fred Miller doesn't like to catch them. And if anything, we are not going to run pressed man-to-man -man coverage at this point in the game because that is how you get burnt deep. Johnson's going to get in and get the sack, taking us to the half at 12 to 7. And we get ball to start the third quarter too. So all is good. Ryan Wilson's going to break off a nice one. And the fact that Grand Rapids is 4-1 and one and competing with every team in the MAC in season four is incredible. It's been pretty easy to recruit because of our Hulu show, but Ryan Wilson isn't getting up from that tackle. And this is the third time he's been ruled out for the game. Things were going so well offensively for us. And now we're going to be without our stud, but I think it'll be fine. I have a route that I want to go to on third and seven over the middle of the field to Weber, which we hold on to. And it has been a while since I've taken shots like that, but those end up working out for us. Andrew Cardi is in the game, obviously, as our backup, and he looks so slow on this touchdown. So I'm not going back to him on the two-point conversion, and we had no time. We will certainly be relying on our defense like we did in the first half. Kimber's going to get out to Cunningham. And on second and seven, they're going with another run, but Joel Johnson was all over it. So now it's third down where I'm trying to send in a blitz on Richie Watson. It worked out. We have pressured him so well, and we can take full control of this game, assuming that we have a good offensive drive against them, but we're going to need Andrew Cardi to be a little bit quicker on this halfback toss, and those were some amazing blocks. Third and three now. We have four verticals out there, but it's man coverage, so there's not much that we can do on this one, and it looked like they were going to run zone, so I was just going to laser them up the seams, but that did not pay off, obviously, and this punt bounced inside the 20 where Morrow's going to pick it up and then get this tackle away from Odom, but we have done a great job in making sure they don't break away anything too big, and come on, boys, we got to make that. There's still plays where we run into issues, but our tackling has been so much better. And I feel like Steven Anderson should have picked that pass off. Now they're going over to Yancey. So they're starting to pick on him. And that's when we're going to bring a blitz at Richie Watts, who has not handled the pressure well. And I might as well do something like that on every play, but they were prepared for it. This is a massive third and one. And we stacked the box perfectly, but they're going to run to the outside. So George Cunningham gets the first. And with 12 seconds left in the half, they're going with another run to him. But Rodney Cronin just made back-to-back -back tackles. And he was not doing that last season. So I have to admit that I'm impressed. And I hope that they're not going to convert here because holding them to a field goal would be so much better for us. And that is what we are going to do. Our defense has stepped up big time. And if this run play doesn't go anywhere, it's going to be the last time I hand it off in the entire game. There is no reason for us to do it with a backup. We have much more success passing, but Ryan Pace is kind of selling. We're going to have to get this comeback route and Buffalo brought a blitz before we could. Once again, something was open, but our offensive line could not hold up in time. And this punt is not going to go well for us. Buffalo's taking it to our 25. Thank goodness the refs are bringing it back a little bit, but I still think that they're starting this drive in field goal range. And on second and eight, it's another handoff, which we are prepared for, but they're going to shed that tackle and 32 just broke free. Thank goodness Lamar Spelling didn't reach the end zone on that one because it would have given him a two possession lead. And we have locked up in this situation before, so I'm confident we can do it again. But we also have to use timeouts and that is worrisome. On third and four, they just went with the halfback draw and we couldn't get over to it. And then Johnson just tackled their player. I don't know why the computer keeps doing this, but it actually helped us because it stopped the clock and the Bulls might be up by nine points. But if we can score quick, it's not over and their defense has been so good, but I'm going to have to try and go for the deep shot. But I wanted something fast and it did not work out. But you know what? We're going to go to Ernie Hicks this time. And I think he's going to be able to catch this football. So that is exactly what we were looking for. And they have man-to-man -man coverage on this play, which has stuck like glue to our wide receivers. And I know we don't have any above a 74 overall. How did Andrew Cardi just get out of there and also spin out to get to the 15? And don't tell me that the refs are bringing it back. That is so upsetting. We got exactly what we needed and we are going for the deep shot, but it was underthrown. And now Ryan Pace is isn't getting up. It says that the junior is going to return soon, but that means freshman Brian Johnson's taking his first snap. Not ideal. He's just going to scramble because he doesn't want to risk throwing the ball. And he only has like 80 speed, but it's so nice to have a quarterback that can also run. So I am excited to use him in the future. We're going to go for this hitch route to Robinson, but they're all over it, forcing this third and six where our tight ends open up the middle and he dropped it too. I don't know if we should kick a field goal in this situation. I think it makes sense to go for it since we've gotten this far down the field, but their defense was all over us this entire game. And I'm disgusted that the fact that we're going to lose to Buffalo because I feel like we could have beaten them. They even ran out of bounds there, so it's third and one where they're not going to pick it up. So we technically still have a chance, and I guarantee that if we still had players like Ben Fowler, we would have put up way more than 13 points on this Bulls defense today. It also doesn't help that Ryan Wilson's been out, but we were struggling with him as well, and they're not giving us that either as nothing is going our way at this point. But we can't give up because if we somehow recovered an onside kick, we could be right back into it. Steven Arrington takes us to the 10, and with 30 seconds left, Ryan paces is just going to beam it to our tight end.
end, but they've stopped his one route very well, and this slant's not going anywhere. Our best hope is Dante Moss gets open on his corner route, and I think that's exactly what he's going to do. So maybe we need to make sure that the freshman gets some more targets. And hear me out, not all hope is lost. If we kick this correctly, the rain could definitely cause them to slip up, but Ball is going to hold on to the ball, and we have fallen short to Buffalo, taking our second loss mainly because of one interception from Ryan Pace, Ryan Wilson not playing, and none of our receivers doing that well. We literally forced six sacks on them, and it's not going to matter. And next up on our schedule is Michigan State, so we're going to be taking a break from MAC conference play, and even though they're 1-4, and four, they're favored, because on paper, they're 14 overalls higher, and we've never beaten them before, but they did lose to Eastern Michigan. Obviously, they're pretty good this year since they beat Western Michigan, but it makes me look forward to our matchup versus them, where we have three straight rivalries. As for this recording session, this is going to be my final game of the night, so I'm hoping that we can go out and shock the world, but at least keep it competitive, if anything, and they're already getting a first down on us. The Spartans always seem to have a running back that we struggle to stop on the run. And Dallas Hicks seems to be no different, but Sam Leavitt's going to keep this one. They're going to get multiple good blocks, and Steven Anderson is going to miss the tackle on him as well, so they're going to take this one to the crib. Almost immediately, we are going down 7-0, which is not good, and our tight end doesn't hold on to it, so that is unfortunate. Now I'm going to look in the direction of Steven Arrington, and it's off target. I wanted to get Ryan Pace going early on so he wouldn't have so many misses, but that is three straight bad passes from the junior, and we are not getting off to to a good start here against the Spartans. Hopefully our defense can look better on this drive stopping Dallas Hicks. And on second and 12, they're going with another run, which they didn't pitch. And I'm very thankful for that because they could have picked up a lot. Surely they won't convert here. And we have gotten Michigan State off the field while also getting a good return, but we need our offense to step up. And Ryan Pace has yet to have a single pass that was on target. So we're gonna try to run, but that isn't working either. So he's gonna have to figure it out on this third and 12. And that's gonna be intercepted. Are you kidding me? We actually had somebody open there. There. But by the time we got it out, they were able to force the pick on us, and Hicks broke that tackle. Even though we've looked good against Max schools, our program's a long way away from being good. And here on third and 11, they just went with another run on us, but it's somehow gonna work. I don't remember them throwing a single pass until this play, and we have gotta find a way to stack the box against them and have some success against Dallas Hicks, because he's been doing too well, so hopefully we can get them off the field here, and that's what we do. Holding them to three is a big deal, because even though our offense has looked terrible just like it did against Buffalo, I'm confident that eventually we're going to find our groove and we have a touchdown but we fumble it away to the Spartans instead and my frustration in our offense is continuing to build their scoring so we're playing like we would have in season one and I don't even know what to try that's going to work because we haven't had any success until this catch from Steven Arrington and hopefully from here on out Ryan Pace can continue to hit his target that was a very frustrating start to this game and on third and three Steven Arrington motioned over which is going to leave Ryan Wilson wide open underneath to pick up the first down so it took a lot of scheming but we were able to move the chains on the Spartans, and I bet they think we're going to run again, so I hit him with the play action, but that's not working. It has in previous weeks, but not against Michigan State, as they're getting another sack, and I've gotten so used to facing these 75 overall max schools that now that we're playing against a real program, we are getting embarrassed, and we have got to stop this run where Dallas Hicks is going to get at least five, but it's a third and manageable. They're not hitting us with the halfback draw, and instead, they're hitting us with a corner route to Harris, so I think that's the last time that we're going to try and run man coverage against the Spartans, because it's not going to work against Michigan State. Zone isn't either though as they're always able to find the open man and another thing I've noticed is whenever we're in zone they have a better chance of having a big run against us Henry's gonna catch this one to the 15 and I don't know what to do because it's about to be 24 to 0 against us we have to make this tackle and Dallas Hicks really hasn't done that much but our offense has been so bad that we are trailing by three possessions and it's about to be four I feel like we have no option but to send a blitz on this third down and surprisingly we got to the quarterback so we're gonna take a timeout and be thankful that it's still a three possession game but we need something to go Ryan Pace's way and on this one he's going to look for a slant over to Steven Arrington where that throw was completely behind him but it didn't make a difference it actually helped helping us pick up even more yards and once we get things rolling through the air we normally have a decent bit of momentum but that's going to be intercepted by Rucker and we need a flag or something to bail us out but it's not PI so Michigan State's going to keep it and it's wild that he was able to actually catch this ball through our player's helmet I made that read based on physics but it's not going to matter Sam is going to throw it straight to Miller and the Juco finally gets an interception, which just shows that the ball never lies. We shouldn't have had a turnover anyway, and Weber gets to the 20. If we could score, that could very well be the turning point in this game, but we can't kick a field goal. We have to reach the end zone, and that's tough. Their defense is really locking down, but I don't think they're going to stick with Steven Arrington, and I would absolutely love if Michigan State threw another interception to us, which is a very real possibility since they're not taking it to the half, and I don't understand why they're playing so aggressive, but it might pay off as I think they're getting in field goal range. Why do they have to try so hard against
against us and have so much success. This is frustrating. And technically, it's still a two possession game, but I almost want to take a deep shot just to see what happens on the final play of the half. And this is probably just going to be another interception, but it's not. And imagine if Anthony Weber could have broken free. We need him to come out in the third quarter playing like that, and he did not create any separation, which is just dumb because this is a route that normally gets wide open, but instead it got boxed up. And Ryan Pace made the hot read at the point where they normally create the separation, but it didn't work out, and they are going with another run on second and 10. So I have to say, if we weren't giving it to Michigan State so much, their offense hasn't been that solid. We're literally the reason they've had incredible field positioning half of the game, and Sam Leavitt is going to escape the pocket. He's running for a lot, and we're going to force the fumble on him. I'm not sure our defense has gotten two turnovers in a game yet this year, and this drive cannot stall out. It cannot result in a safety either. We have our tight end, and as long as we continue to move it down the field without throwing a pick, I'll be happy. We also haven't run the ball that much, but it's late in the night. I'm pretty tired, and I knew we'd probably struggle in this game, but I wanted to make sure I had good rest right before we play against Western and Eastern Michigan, so that is why the night has ended against the Spartans, and Ryan Pace can't do anything. He throws dart after dart, and then his offensive line gives up the sack, and it's another interception off of the deflection. Are you kidding me? Joby's gotten two of those himself. This has been by far the worst our offensive line has performed, and I'm going to be sick because this is actually a winnable game. We could have gone out and taken down Michigan State in this one. I'm pretty confident in that, but instead, it's been turnover after turnover, and Ryan Pace has never thrown four picks in one game. Once again, all they're getting is a field goal, and you know what? It's not Ryan Pace's day. I'm just going to put in Brian Johnson. It already feels like a lost cause, so we might as well see what the freshman can do, and that way Ryan Pace can't get injured before we take on our rivals in the next two weeks where we're going to need him. Brian Johnson won't be a starter for another year and a half because Ryan Pace is only a junior, and he's putting the ball right where it needs to be, but that was a tough drop to experience. Anthony Webber's going to juke out that cornerback, and this could be a massive play from him where he is going to take it all the way to the five. We have finally gotten something going, and Johnson's going to take it to the crib. So Brian Johnson, the freshman, didn't do terribly there, and this is why we wanted to get him a little bit of experience. Here on second and 10, they're going with another handoff that we are all over, and they might run it again on third down, but instead they're hitting us with a halfback screen where we would have gotten over there, but they had the perfect block, and that's so unfortunate. Steven Anderson was this close to getting a huge interception, and that could have changed everything in this game for us, but it didn't. So we're ending the third quarter, still trailing two possessions, and we've gotten them to a third and two, where we have nothing to lose by run committing, and we have Cronin over there to make a tackle on Dallas Hicks, but he wasn't able to bring him down. And so many little things like that not going our way is the reason that we're trailing to the Spartans, including that where we clearly should have had the interception. Anderson isn't bringing down Dallas Hicks, and neither is Rodney Cronin, and he somehow just got free, and he's taking it to the crib. That was so ridiculous that the refs even want to bring it back. So the clipping penalty is going to save us for the time being, and I thought Andrew Monroe had it. He almost ball hawked it, and on third and two, we sent in a blitz, but Michigan State's going to pick it up, and the only way we can stay in this game is if we're able to hold them to a field goal, so that is a very big sack. And Joel Johnson has got to be the best signing in school history, at least on defense. Third and seven now. I'm trying to rush the quarterback with him, but they're going to pick it up, and they've converted on down so many times, which has made this a very frustrating drive, and I don't think we're getting the stop on them. We needed our offense to perform better at the beginning, but now it's third and two, and we have ran commit up the middle where we're going to hold them. There's around two and a half minutes left on the clock, and let's let the freshman go to work where Michigan State has already generated pressure instantly, and that defensive tackle has been destroying our line all day. We're going to hit him with the halfback screen where they tried to get in pressure, and now Ryan Wilson is going to take full advantage of it, but we still have a long way to go if we want to reach the end zone and there's no time. I'm going to have to make sure that the rest of the year there's no more play action plays in our playbook, and that's an off-target throw which the Spartans are going to easily pick, so obviously they're going to seal the win over us, but this matchup wasn't as much of a blowout as it could have been, and I have to be proud with how some of the boys played, but they're one of our rivals that we just can't seem to get a win over, and it makes sense considering they're a bigger program, but Ryan Pace is only going to have one more opportunity to do so, and this stat line's terrible. We had negative rushing yards, and the only success we had was when it came to receiving, so that's unfortunate because now we're sitting at four and three, but I can't complain because we have a player that's almost leading the country in sacks, and Joel Johnson is only a freshman, so he'll keep getting better, and these are the final two players we're going after in recruiting, which makes sense when you consider that we've already signed all of these guys, and we're not supposed to beat our rivals Eastern Michigan. But before we hop into this one, we have to see who comes out on top here. And in the Michigan Max series, both of these teams are 0-1, but I would have never imagined that Western Michigan is going to fall again. And they've won this series like the last three years. Going into this one, Eastern Michigan has a couple offensive players I'm worried about, but at least we're going to have some good weather. And we're on a two-game losing streak, so we have got to snap that. We're facing them here on their gray field where that's a bad start. And of all the Michigan Max schools, they're the best one on 
paper, so I am intimidated because they've already gotten us to a third and 19 where we are not going to hit the seam up the middle to Dante Moss. It was open, but it was a bad throw, and they're also returning this all the way to the 10-yard line. Oh my gosh. We literally had the first down, but Ryan Pace decided that he was going to miss so badly, and this is not a great start to the day where their freshman quarterback, Robert Davis, isn't going anywhere. Second and goal now. We're going to send in a little bit of pressure, and I'm waiting for it with Anderson. He still got out, though, and I can tell that we're going to need a quarterback spy. We have somebody over there to make the tackle, but Deion Brown still managed to find his way into the end zone, and let's hope that Ryan Pace can hit his target a little bit better on this drive. That's a decent start. He's only a 75 overall, so we can't expect him to hit every target, and that's why we have to get a better team on paper because there's only so much I can do. If running the ball isn't going to work, we're going to resort to passing where we have our tight end over the middle of the field, and Jackson McGowan was able to reel that one in. Now I see Anthony Weber on this slant for another eight, and we're going to see if we can get Ryan Wilson into some space with this halfback toss where he was able to get around those defenders. Obviously, if he was quicker, it could have gone for more, but I'm not going to complain about it because after that unfortunate start, I feel like we're bouncing back really well, and what a route from Dante. He absolutely cooked this defender that was on him, getting so much separation, and it is time to see if our defense can step up where we forced the fumble, but we couldn't bounce on it. That was literally it right there. I cannot believe that they were able to get away with it, and then David Conception drops the interception, so we should have forced a stop already. On third and 12, we just have to make sure that these slants don't get open. That is beautiful coverage, and no way. Robert Davis couldn't hit his target, and we might not have opened the game the way that I would have hoped we would have, but we've responded back pretty quickly, and let's just take our hitch over to Steven Arrington for the first. I think earlier in this episode, I said he was a sophomore, but he's a junior, and he was one of the first recruits that we ever got, coming away with another catch, and that takes us to the end of the first quarter, where to start the second, we need to pick up this third and inches with Ryan Wilson, and unless he is a really good offseason, I think next year, we're going to start Juco recruit Demarcus Perkins. We will see how the year finishes out, though. He could step up big time, and on second and 11, it looks like they're going with some zone coverage, but we couldn't get the ball out in time, so it is now third and 20, where we're trying to fit it into that tight window, and sophomore Anthony Weber is insane. We should not be about to reach the end zone in this position, but we throw an interception on the wide receiver screen, and you have got to be joking. I have thousands of hours on NCAA football, and I've never seen the computer pick it off. Now, Deion Brown gets perfect blocks, and he's going to take this to the house, and everything just flips so quickly for us. They just casually got a 95-yard touchdown run, and like it was nothing, Ryan Wilson's going to try and respond, but he's not going to break that one off for too much, and now we're going over the Jackson McGowan, who takes it to the 40-yard line. Ryan Pace really hadn't thrown that many interceptions this season until recently, and then he just fumbled it away. What is up with all of these turnovers? They're taking this one back to the crib as well, and we're going down 21-7. to They've gotten the ball back three times in this game, none of which I would say are my fault. Look at Ernie Hicks, though, breaking free. This is what we needed from him, and let's get this offense moving without turnovers. We were doing so well until these recent games, and it is now third and 13, where we're going over to Ryan Wilson. He's not picking it up, but we might as well go for it because we can't punt it to them, and that's a beautiful throw to Ernie. Being aggressive paid off. It felt like we had no choice, and on second and 11, they're running man-to-man -man coverage, so we're going to have our backup tight end, Kelvin Hackett, wide open, where this time, surely we're able to finish off this drive. I see Dante Moss, and let's just hope that our defense can stop the run on this one, where so far, we're looking pretty solid. They haven't even completed a pass yet, but I knew that corner route would probably get open. We're not going to make the tackle, and neither is Rodney Cronin. That is so unfortunate as Walker Jr. is going to take this one to the house. And can you believe that we have already given up 28 points to Eastern Michigan? This is bad. I do not like how we've been performing recently. It's not impressive. And we need Anthony Weber to pull off something here if he can get open on the slant, which he does, which makes Ryan Pace now 16 for 20. He's thrown for over 200 yards in this performance, but he also has three turnovers approaching the half, and he can't hook up with his tight end. Another third and long situation, and I think we're going to have to take the comeback route. We had no choice. Steven Arrington makes the play of the day. Well, at least the second best play of the day. Nothing's going to top that catch that Anthony Weber had early on. And on second down, I was hoping for man-to-man -man coverage because Ernie Hicks is going to destroy that corner that thought he could keep up with him. Approaching halftime, we are only down by seven. Johnson almost got the sack. Andrew Monroe's not going to bring down their quarterback. We'll see if Fred Miller can, and he can either. Come on. I've made sure that there's a quarterback spy out there on this play because of it. And this one should just be going to the half. He isn't going to go anywhere, but they could always get something fluky like a Hail Mary, and we couldn't get pressure, and in time, that ball's not getting close to the end zone, and that should have been picked. It would have been nice to add that to our stat total, and also give our defense a little bit of momentum. We are clamping up, though, and you can't scramble on Joel Johnson. Having him has literally changed our defense, but Deion Brown is wide open on the bubble screen, and he takes that for the first down. That's unfortunate. I didn't think that he was going to cook us that badly. We could get the interception, but Jamar Robinson dropped it, and he is so bad. Even though he's now a senior, he still hasn't been able to figure out how to catch the football, so Eastern Michigan's 
drive stays alive. It's a little bit of a weird camera angle here where Brandon Jones catches it and he breaks two tackles to get the touchdown. What has happened to our defense? They don't look good. And right now the Michigan Mac rivalry is on the line where we are going to almost throw a pick. This is a massive third and 11 and it seems like we're going to have the crosser over the middle of the field, but we have got to continue to move the ball and they have nobody over there on Ryan Wilson, which is why we're going to take it to him. Instead of running, I think it's best if we just continue to sling it on the Eagles and we just have to hope that Ryan Pace doesn't have any inaccurate balls because that'd be costly. There's still plenty of time left, so we don't have to be in too much of a hurry, but back-to-back -back drops make this a third and 10 where we are going over to Dante Moss and now it is fourth and one. Since we haven't run yet, I doubt they're going to expect it here and they didn't, so maybe we should keep that up and our blockers have just gotten in our way. I think this route from Anthony Weber will get wide open, especially if it's man-to-man -man coverage, but we're taking the corner route and that's the second time Ernie Hicks has reached the end zone. Let me tell you, the Michigan Mac rivalry series is always a good one and Robert Davis isn't going down. Come on boys. He should not have been able to stay up for that long, but it's all good. We are ready for him on this next one and this better not be a run. It is a pass, which is perfect, but I didn't put a quarterback spy out there and he instantly knew it. This guy's only a freshman, so he is going to be a problem for a long time, but Steven Anderson getting the tackle for loss is nice and now they're trying to run, but I had Ricky Gamble in a quarterback spy and this has got to be the most sacks that this team has ever forced in a year. We've gotten the ball back as well and Ryan Wilson gets stopped. So once again, his rushing totals are not going to look very impressive, but I'll still find him out of the backfield. He's got five receptions in this game and Ryan Pace is going to pick up the first, but that was a close call. And I just saw that we have 19 first downs to Eastern Michigan's four. We have dominated in our performance and we're still losing to them, but I'm starting to really like this formation because there's so many routes that get open out of it. And we'll see how this run play goes over to Andrew Cardi for a few, setting up a second and six for Ryan Pace to have a wide open tight end up the seam. And I will be looking for Jackson McGowan on this corner route where Ryan Pace is going to roll out, throw it on the run, and connect with him for another 10. We are closing in on tying it up versus the Eagles. And here on second and 12, I would like to take it to Dante Moss, but they're guarding back there, so we have to take it underneath. Setting up a third and long where he is open in the end zone and he holds on. I will be kicking this extra point, making it 35 all. And this is the best rivalry series in college football. It is always so good. And Joel Johnson gets another sack. So he has set a school career record as a freshman, which is insane. Mikhail Wood hasn't done anything versus us though until this play. And we've got to lock in because they're already nearing field goal range. Steven Anderson is going to make the tackle, setting up a second and seven where it's a quarterback run with Robert Davis. And Andrew Monroe was all over that. We just got to get them off the field on this third and three. Robert Davis is not going to scramble. And I'm also taking a timeout. We're going to have an opportunity to take down Eastern Michigan with a touchdown or a field goal because their kick was no good. And Ernie Hicks has dusted number 44 and also spun out of there to get to the 35. This has been an incredible performance here in the second half from our offense. And on second and 12, again, we have somebody that's gotten open, but we couldn't get it out, making this a third and 12 where we just have to go with the slant to Anthony Weber. And I trust Myron Cooper, our sophomore kicker, to drill this kick. But unfortunately, we left time on the clock. And look at how badly we've outplayed Eastern Michigan. I'm going to be so upset if they march down the field and send it to overtime, but they've only got 40 seconds left. We're going to try and generate pressure by sending some on Robert Davis, and he just throws it over. And are you kidding me? Mikhail Wood came down with that ball. What? It's frustrating because Steven Anderson didn't even jump to try and get it. And I was not expecting them to get that big gain there, but we are still going to get the sack. That's exactly what you want to see from your defense now on this third and 13. They're going up the seam and we can try to ice them, but it's not going to matter as they send it to overtime. At least we get to start on defense, but I'm frustrated with Steven Anderson because we could have had multiple picks and there's another example. For whatever reason, he cannot jump in the slightest, so we have to keep it in mind. And the question is, do we go for the two point conversion if we reach the end zone here. I kind of like our odds of having success in doing that. We're going to take the hitch to our tight end Jackson McGowan, but we have also drastically outplayed the Eagles. So theoretically, we should continue to do so assuming this game goes on. Andrew Cardi gets in and you know what? If we're pulling off stuff like this, I think we're prepared to go for the win, but I didn't like that look. So I called a timeout to get my play out there and we are going to try and take the drag, but Steven Arrington gets caught. Oh boy, that amount of aggressiveness is not going to pay off and I can already see the comments. That's a mistake that we're going to have to learn from because Robert Davis just took us down as a freshman. But if Central could beat Eastern Michigan, we could still have a three-way tie for the Michigan Mac. And we just wasted an amazing final three quarters from Ryan Pace. I'd also consider this the Ernie Hicks breakout game. And watching this back is painful because that drag got bumped, which is why it was so low. Our tight end was wide open. And that's a money play that's worked for us in the past. So I trusted it. But now we're sitting at third in our division. And we could have been in first because Buffalo's coming off of a loss to Toledo. Now that we've dropped three straight, our odds of making a bowl game aren't the best. 
because we end the year playing Michigan and none of our final three MAC opponents are a cakewalk as Western Michigan has a 99 overall quarterback and I don't know how they're struggling this season. Either way, we're going to have to beat them and if we do plus Central Michigan takes down Eastern, I think we still have a chance at winning the Michigan MAC trophy. My expectations going into this game cannot be that high and here on third and nine, Joel Johnson's going to try and get the sack. He missed the tackle when Flynn is also going to miss the tackle which means they're going to pick up a huge game but I think the refs are going to bail us out and never mind they're doing the opposite. To be honest that's kind of upsetting because it's clear that their quarterback just flopped over and that puts Trace and Burgett in the Western Michigan offense inside our red zone where Jalen Buckley is not going down. They are literally having zero issues versus us and I want to stop them here. Andrew Monroe cannot make the tackle though so that was huge from Drew Flynn. Now on third and goal they're going to take the slant and unfortunately Jared Reed's going to put them on the board. They took half the first quarter with that drive and now Wilson's going absolutely nowhere going backwards in fact and on second and 14 they're going to leave the hitch route to Anthony Weber open which we're going to take setting up a third and six for Ryan Pace where he needed to be on target and that was not on target. It luckily still worked out for us but this ball was supposed to go to our tight end and that's how bad he's been missing some throws this season which is frustrating but at least it worked out for us and I'm starting to feed Weber more than anybody else. I think this is four down territory so we're just going to try and hit him with the run on third and one but Ryan Wilson can't pick it up and Kelvin Hackett drops it. I don't know what happened to our team but we seem to be playing so much worse and the way we opened up the season isn't how we're finishing it. Here on third and five they didn't go with the halfback draw they're passing and are you kidding me Steven Anderson just got burnt that bad and he can't make the tackle. His zone coverage stats must not be that good because that has been happening to us a ton recently and that was the first quarter I want to forget. I'm gonna give Ryan Wilson one more chance to get it going on the ground because I feel like he's our best chance at picking up this third and one and that's the case. Ever since those early season injuries he's looked a lot slower and our weaknesses as a program have started to show this halfback screen isn't going to go for what I thought it would. Making it now third and six where that hitch route's going to have to be held onto. And Dante Moss deserves more playing time. We could not get this throw out. So that's why we have to refrain from having any play action. And this one is also off the marks. Our offense is about to stall out again unless we can hit this seam up the middle to our tight end. And if it wasn't for Jackson McGowan, we probably wouldn't have more than a few wins this year. That crossing route was just completely missed though. Harris is going to get the interception on Ryan Pace. And the longer these off-target passes go on for, the more frustrated I'm getting. He's gotten Grand Rapids to an amazing point in this football program, but at the end of the day, we have got to start doing better, and this is going to be a huge gain for Western Michigan. So it's getting to the point where I'm actually considering a quarterback change, and are you kidding me? They broke that tackle. We can't be embarrassed by our biggest rivals again, especially here at home. And on second and 10, he's keeping it on the read option, but we stopped it. This is such a big third and 13 where we aren't generating any pressure, but they just went to their running backs, so they have no choice but to kick a field goal, and we have got to get things going offensively. If Ryan Pace turns it over again, I might bench him. That's an inaccurate throw, but it just doesn't feel right to do that since he's led us to so much. And now it is third and 17 where we need the miracle, which is actually held onto. I'm also going to take the play action off this plate and see if that helps at all, where we have more time back there in the pocket to get it out to Steven Arrington. And Ryan Pace is stepping up on this drive, now hooking up with Jackson McGowan for another game where he spun two defenders. So we're just going to keep moving it. And Ryan Pace with the read option is actually running for 15 yards. That is not something that I was expecting to see there, but we just had a fantastic drive and now we have to make sure that they don't do anything crazy before the half as we bring them down, but they're calling timeout. So I guess they want to score again. And that is a cause of concern. This has got to be caught. And freshman Drew Flynn had that one in his hands. That is so frustrating. We were literally about to force the stop on them and now they're getting a massive gain to Anderson. Andrew Monroe makes the tackle, but I doubt we're going to get the Broncos off of the field now because they're completing another one on our defense. And Trace and Burgett is now going to look at his four verticals, but see that not a single one was open. Making sure that all they gets a field goal is such a big deal on this drive. And we are so close to that being the case. Just got to hold them for one more play where nothing is open. And thank goodness. It's a two possession game at the half, which obviously isn't ideal, but at least we have possession of the ball to open up the third quarter. And I'm expecting us to go down the field, scoring a touchdown on this drive where that was intercepted because Jackson McGowan couldn't hold on to the ball. It was a hot read that was forced into a window. It probably shouldn't have been, but I was hoping for the best and Trace and Burgett just got five yards. Technically, as of right now, they're not in field goal range, but that's going to change as he's able to shed one tackle to get the first down and move the chains. So things are not looking too good for us as they continue to run the ball on us. And once again, we're not going to win the Michigan Mac trophy unless we can figure out how to pull off the comeback against them. And come on, Jamar Robinson. He literally had it in his hands. And with this kick, it looks like it could be just short. So all is good. We're getting the ball back still down by two possessions. And we have Jackson McGowan on the corner route. If needed, I will have one of those out there on every play. And we can also take drags because I believe that this is a matchup we can still come back in. And we're just going to have to be smart. It helps when the opposing team's committing face mask penalties. And on first and 10, they're running man.
man-to-man -man coverage, so you know that Steven Arrington's gonna get open there, which means we are so close to scoring, we just have to be smart now, and Ryan Wilson gets it. All of a sudden, we're only down by six, and I think we can trust our defense to get a stop on Western Michigan, so we have hope again, and I'm ready for the tight end to run a corner route, but they gave it to the slant. Trayson Burgett's a 99 overall, so he's not gonna miss any throws if we give it to him, and we're probably giving him way too much time back there. Johnson is open up the seam for a 20, and we desperately need one of these blitzes to pay off if we're able to get in in time, because we have to make sure that they don't get into field goal range, and they might attempt the kick if they don't pick up any yardage here, which they're unfortunately going to do to their backup running back. So now they're down on the goal line, and there are so many hitch routes out there. We'll see if the route bounce goes their way. He sheds the sack and throws it, which means unfortunately Western Michigan's going up 13, and there's still plenty of time left in this game, but if we don't have success on this drive, I don't think we have a chance at coming back. At least that was a beautiful route and catch from Steven Arrington, though, to make sure that we get to midfield, and I'm going to trust him to do the same thing on this play where he finds the open space in the defense. So that takes us to the end of the third quarter. And we have found some very solid plays in this playbook that work for us, but we need to mix it up because we can't be too predictable and Ryan Pace isn't getting it out. The most frustrating part about that is we had a touchdown too, but I like that concept on the left side of the field with Steven Arrington not getting open because they're playing deep. So we're going to go to Ryan Wilson again. And the end zone is so close where we're feeding it to Jackson McGowan, but we need a good third and one play call and we haven't run the ball in a minute. I figured that Western Michigan would wouldn't be expecting it, and I'm gonna rely on Andrew Cardi to finish it off, where we have gotten it back within six points, and on first and ten, Western Michigan is just throwing the ball with Trace and Burgett going for 20, but that's my fault for not bringing in a blitz at the Broncos. We're gonna make sure that we do on all of these next plays, making it third down, and out of five wide, this coverage is very risky, but we have got to stop the run, and we do. It's time to take a timeout, and understand that this could be an amazing final drive for us. McDade's gonna have a flag on this play, so all of the returning work that he did isn't gonna matter, but I'm okay with it because we have an opportunity to actually win, and what a route from Anthony Weber. The thing about Ryan Pace is if we didn't have such a slow start, we wouldn't even be in this position. Did he really just throw an interception there? Are you kidding me? They're also going to take it back to the crib. I wasn't expecting it, and I'm at a loss for words because we had an open drag underneath, but he put the ball so far and high up the field, and now we find ourselves back down two possessions to them. The interceptions in these recent matchups have been insane. We are experiencing more than ever before, and I don't know why the computer has just started to clamp up on us. We're trying to fit it in these tighter windows, but whatever it is, now our comeback hopes have definitely lessened, and come on. Third and 19. We are going to need a lot of time to get this throw off into the window I'm looking at, but Anthony Weber drops it, so we have one more opportunity to go for the first down, and we hold on. This game is not over. We have two timeouts remaining, so that's why I'm still hoping for the best. Ryan Pace has thrown it away, and even if we don't recover an onside kick, we'd have about 30 seconds left if we forced a three and out. We even open Jackson McGowan at the 10-yard line, and the sooner we score, the better as we're lasering it straight to Clemens, but that did not work out for us, and now we need this to be caught. I haven't even seen Brett Jackson's name before, but he was in the game, but there's only 56 seconds left, so we had to go for the onside kick, and the Broncos are going to recover it, unfortunately. We've got to force a fumble or something, and I've actually seen that happen before. It's just not likely. Third and nine now, where we shoot the gap, and Buckley stays up on his feet. We're not going to bring him down. They're just rubbing salt in the wound at this point by scoring, but I guess it also gives us a chance because we could get onto the board very quickly and then get an onside kick, so I'll take it. I'd rather have an opportunity than nothing, but the deep post didn't get open, and I waited way too long on it. I was trying to fit it into that window. This one's going to Stephen Arrington, but I'd say it is a little bit too late. About five seconds left on the clock now, going over to Weber, and we have to literally score on this play within two seconds, so we're quickly throwing it, but the ball is dropped, so there's no hope of coming back, and just to make it close, I'm going to try and get it within four points on them, which is going to actually work, but I think that was our offensive lineman that came away with that catch and fight for the end zone, so maybe we need to move him over the tight end, but we lose again, and I think it's time that we make a switch at quarterback. Ryan Pace has never beaten Western Michigan, and obviously as of recently, he has had a lot of turnover issues. Plus, we have good receivers, but we aren't able to run the ball because with him at quarterback, we can't. So I'm ready to give an opportunity to the young freshman, Brian Johnson, and as of right now, he's a very balanced player. Because we went 1-2 and two in the Michigan-Mac rivalry, the winner of this matchup will be taking home the trophy, and this is the first time it's going to be another team other than Western Michigan. We'll see what happens. Bert Emanuel Jr. on a fourth and seven is going to pick it up for Central Michigan, but there's only 14 seconds left on the clock and his team is trailing by four points, so they're going to have to rely on getting a Hail Mary to win this game, upsetting Eastern Michigan where the ball is up and it is intercepted. The Eagles have won the Michigan Mac Trophy, and they deserved it as they've beaten every team, but what's scary is they've gotten it with a freshman quarterback, and I think we're going to have issues with him going forward for a while. If we are going to make a bowl game, we have to beat Toledo and Western Kentucky, and we're projected to lose since we're starting a freshman, but Toledo's missing their starting running 
running back and quarterback as they both have foot fractures out for the season. So I like our odds going into this and it's about time that Grand Rapids bounces back. We have had so many rough performances in a row at this point. So it's not like things can get any worse for us. They are getting open with man coverage and maybe we'll have to run zone on them. That's what we're about to experiment with. The halfback screen gets five. But no matter what, my main focus in this game is going to be about how our defense does and I just swerved out of tackling him. I'm not sure what I was thinking right there. I thought I was clicked on to another player and because of it, Jason Miner got a 38 yard run, but it's fine because we stopped them there and he slipped out of it, but we're going to make the tackle. So this is our chance to get them off the field. Their quarterback's rolling out and we have almost gotten a sack on him. He broke it. Now they're going for the route bounce and are you kidding me? They should be kicking a field goal right now. Instead, they're going for the end zone. And on second and goal, it is another rushing attempt where they've pitched it last second, but we've made it a third down where I ran commit and Jason Miner isn't picking it up. Our defense held strong when it mattered and Brian Johnson is out there for this snap where I'm instantly going to try to run with him, but he's not as quick as I was thinking. That's probably not the start that the freshman quarterback was hoping to get, but he throws it to Jackson McGowan. And the fact that we could be moving the chains here is insane. If we're going to do anything right with him, it's probably run the ball with this run going for like seven. And it looks like they're ready to stop the read option on this play, which I was correct about. But I have confidence that we can pick up this third and two and Jackson McGowan catches another. So far, he's only passed it twice, but both of those throws have been on target. And why can he not throw it away? I was literally sitting there spamming the button and now he's going to be out with back spasms, which means Ryan Pace is on the field. And with this throw, he actually hits his target, which is something he normally doesn't do. He probably isn't happy that he could be losing his starting job. We're going to try and thread the needle again, but he completely missed his target. And that is why we have benched him. What an unfortunate ending to our first drive. Rodney Cronin makes this tackle or maybe not. Now they're running backs trucking us. And that is literally their backup doing it to us. They've gotten the perfect blocks on this play. And I think James Miner is about to run to the crib unless Conception brings him down. So right now we're getting bullied up front and I see the slant open where we should have picked it. And I don't know what else I can do with Steven Anderson there. I tried to stick with them. Now this ball is somehow caught as well. And he's running around for the first down. So EA is trying to get them into the end zone. And these slider sets are brutal sometimes. I missed that tackle. But we held them to a field goal on the last drive and we're all over that halfback screen. On third and nine, it looks like they're gonna go with the pass and I'm all over it with Miller. We just gotta make the tackle in time. But they have done everything that they have needed to the exact right way. And when is Toledo gonna make some mistakes on us? It's time for drive number two for Brian Johnson. He's no longer injured, but that throw is bad. And it looks like they're trying to send a lot of pressure his direction to freak him out with this throw also being off target into an interception that's given right to Toledo. So he's also struggling. And I don't know what's happened to this team. We had a chance to do so well this season, but things just got bad all of a sudden. And I was right there. We're actually regressing as a program. Johnson just got a blitz sent at him. And I knew that this year could be rough compared to last season because we lost some amazing seniors, but we started off so well. And that's why it's thrown me in for a loop that we've been struggling, but they keep on blitzing and we were prepared that time. Anthony Webber comes away with the football and he's taking that one to the crib. Now we just need to force the Rockets into a mistake, which has been very uncommon. I bet they're going to get a route bounce that we can't do anything about. But Jamar Robinson drops the ball and I'm about to send so many players at them because I want to force a pick and we have them on a third and six where that is a comeback route that we're all over, but we couldn't guard the middle of the field as well. So unfortunately, Toledo is going to have success against us and I'm all over it. I don't think I could be playing any better defensively. We're just not able to force stops that we need and they are in a hurry to get this one off. I wasn't sure if they would be. They're going for the deep shot. This has to be picked by Steven Anderson, but he drops it as well, leaving 27 seconds left and we might as well try to get into field goal range. It can't hurt us. Ernie Hicks is going to come away with this slam and then on this one, they're running man-to-man -man coverage. So we're going to have the guy open that I want to throw to on the post, but reason over somehow got over to the football. I was not expecting him to make it and the longer that Anthony Weber's route went on for, the more clamped up that he got. I'm pretty sure that we just gave them a free field goal, so the freshman experiment has not been great. And there it is. They've gotten into the range, but the kick is short. All right, it's still 17 to 7. And if Brian Johnson's going to be in, we have got to go back to running the option where that was an amazing block. But this playbook only has so many of those runs, and this one's only going for four. I like the power option because I can take it straight up the middle, but we could also try and pull it off to the outside, which is what we're going to do here, and then pitch it out of bounds. The fact that he can't even hit his target on a simple pitch is a bit concerning, and we do get this one. But as of right now, Ryan Pace is going to be our starter next week against Western Kentucky and then against Michigan. And for anything to change, Johnson's going to have to play better. We just moved the chains there though. And with this drag route, we're going to get another five. So this formation's been money and we haven't left it for a while. Let's just hope that things are finished strongly. I'm going to roll out, but they are guarding the halfback wheel. So that is unfortunate. The slant on second down is open to Clemens though. And Thomas Clemens gets us back within three. We are still very much in this game. It's not like last year where I'm afraid 
afraid of us never getting a defensive stop, but we don't catch any picks. And I feel like that's a slider that we should seriously consider changing because it is a little ridiculous. I'll need to get your all's opinions on that one in the comments before we start season five. But at the same time, I'm not trying to speed run our success and I think it would do that. I don't know, all of the drops just feel kind of unrealistic when the other team can catch almost anything. And here's a third and 12 where Joel Johnson is not generating pressure quick enough. But on the other side, Chase Durham gets the sack. And this is an opportunity for us to take a lead, but I just did the dumbest hot read in the world. What was I thinking there? This linebacker has a star on him for a reason because he baited sticking with the slant to get to there. And that is an interception that you all can roast me for in the comments, where I think at this point we have averaged like three a game for the last five and they might pick up the first, but that was a clutch tackle. So we are close to holding them to a field goal and on this third and inches, I am all over that. That could have been picked and it is. Anderson holds on to the ball in the end zone. We have finally caught an interception as a team, which feels so good. And I don't think I've ever been more excited for something like that happening in NCAA football. We more than earned that turnover, which is what makes it so rewarding. Ryan Wilson sees the open space and he has one guy to beat on this side of the field. So things are starting to go the way that we were hoping they would. And what a way to end the third quarter. The interceptions have definitely been bad, but you all should expect that from me because this slider set is ridiculous. And on third down, we have our angle route to our tight end. And let's just keep things going. The corner route open on this one. This time it is actually hit by the freshman. And it looks like they're not going to go with man coverage, zone coverage on this play. So we're going back to Jack. Jackson McGowan who fights to the three. This is our chance to punch it into the end zone, but they were all over it. So we find ourselves on a third and six where Brian Johnson's going to try and scramble, but they have held us to a field goal. It's unfortunate, but at least we're tied up at 17 and the pressure is really on because if we don't win this, it's going to be hard to make a bowl game. Here on second and five, they're going with the pass and I'm ready to use her this with Davis. I hope he throws in our direction. There's two players over there. We should have picked it, but you know what? Steven Anderson already caught one, so we can't complain too much. On third and five, it is four verticals. They're going to have to take a deep shot. We even have a quarterback spy out there and that is all boxed up. Steven Anderson actually comes away with the ball and he has the right side of the field open. So he goes over to the left, which makes absolutely no sense. But I'm just so happy that we have caught another interception. Never mind on touching the slider. I think we were just getting really unlucky throughout the whole year. And there's only three minutes left in the game. So we might just try to run out the clock and kick the game winning field goal. I don't see any reason for us to rush in this situation, but we need Ryan Wilson to get more than two yards on a carry. And that's what he does. Big third and three with the power option and Johnson's going to make it. So we're just going to continue to eat away at this clock against them. And Myron Cooper is out there for another game winner where he just drills it. We're back in the race for making a bowl game. And I feel like we should leave Brian Johnson as the starter. With him at the helm, we were able to run the ball a little bit more effectively and he still threw for a decent bit. But it's a hard decision to make because we have to beat Western Kentucky and we've never done it before in program history. They've lost four games, which is why I am very surprised that we're favored to win. We might not be able to win the conference, but we could ruin their chance of making the MAC Conference Championship. And at this point in the year, recruiting every single player has committed. To make a bowl game, getting a result here is everything. And I think at some point we have to expand our home stance because they've been full all season. But in order to be able to afford that, we need to start winning some more games as a program. And Western Kentucky always has our number, so I'm afraid of what they could do to us today. Anderson isn't going to make the tackle on Lester like he should have. And are you kidding me? We had our players get tripped up and that's a score. Randy Lester was somehow able to take that one all the way to the house. And our poor freshman quarterback has a lot of work to do. He literally seems to be no different than Ryan Pace when it comes to missing passes, but he's younger and got us a win in the last game, so we're going to continue to give him a chance, and that is ridiculous. It should have been the easiest completion in the world, and we'll see what he can do on third and 10, where it is so inaccurate that it went straight into Cooper's hands. Our quarterback's accuracies aren't even that bad anymore. Come on, boys. We have got to get it together because bull eligibility is everything for us at this point, and I'm going to try to send some blitzes at their quarterback, but they picked up all of it perfectly, and they're completing that as well. Here on first and 10, they actually didn't run the ball, which is a surprise. Helton isn't going anywhere. And he's actually the backup because Caden Veltkamp is injured. So theoretically, we should be able to take him down. And that could have been intercepted. Come on. Holiday should not be getting nine yards. Third and inches. We cannot get into the hole with Drew Flynn. They picked it up the right way, get into our five yard line. And I'm run committing on first and goal, but that's when they've decided to throw it and their quarterback's able to scramble. I'm going to see if having a quarterback spy out there does anything. And it helped us stop the run somehow, making it third and goal where all they can do is pass 
pass the ball and why is he being left open? There were literally players in zones nearby that weren't guarding anything instead of him. And I don't trust Brian Johnson to hit his targets, but he at least completed that last one and nothing is going our way. We probably shouldn't be this aggressive when it comes to throwing it, but I want to get him going at some point. And I don't trust that we can run for the first down, so we are slinging it to Steven Arrington. It's about time that we start to mix in the run though when Brian Johnson pitches this one to Ryan Wilson, where all we did was lose four yards and I'm just going to go for the deep shot, which was open, but he has missed another pass. I am almost positive that you can see the pain in my eyes when I say stuff like that. And it's hard to continue to complain when we have moved the chains again, but I just know something's bound to go wrong for us soon. And there it is. It could have been worse as they might've gotten an interception. So I guess that's okay, but I don't think we're picking up this third and long unless Ryan Wilson makes the play of the century. And I cannot believe that he just pulled that off, but there's a good throw to Ernie Hicks who gets the touchdown. And to start the second quarter, we're right back within a possession on the Hilltoppers, but we're going to have to figure out how to stop Randy Lester. And those are some bad missed tackles. Our defense has certainly had a much better year than last year, but right now we are struggling. And this is how it always is against Western Kentucky. They just got open. Andrew Monroe drops it. And now they're most likely going to pick up this third and one. So it's all for nothing. But Joel Johnson filled up that gap. And now we could tie it up on this drive. Brian Johnson's not going to go anywhere. Or maybe he is. There's actually some good blockers, but he fumbled it and I should have slid with him. That was such a stupid thing of me to not do. And just when things looked like they were starting to be on the ups for us, the Hilltoppers turn it around. Here on second and three, they're going with another run where we knock over Lester and hopefully we can hold them on third down to a field goal, but nobody's guarding their running back. So they're going to pick it up. I am so frustrated with Brian Johnson right now. And I think it's time that we put Ryan Pace right back into the game. I don't think the freshman's ready for moments like this and we have got to make a bowl. So we need Ryan Pace to step up, which we have definitely seen him do in the past. We're not going to get much on this second and four, but we have been set up with a third and manageable and that was pretty close. What's important is Ryan Wilson picked it up though and we have an open drag to Anthony Weber who jukes out that defender but unfortunately it's coming back and that makes it a first and 16 where Ernie Hicks did get open but it's another missed pass so I'm not even surprised at this point and these sliders are brutal. We should not have a quarterback that is missing throws like this at this point in his career but we're going to pick up the third and long thankfully and I'm debating on revising how bad the throwing sliders are going into next year. That interception is my fault. I can't even blame anybody else for that. I made a bad read. I forced it into a window that was not there and we're going to knock them out of bounds. But it's just frustrating because I'm seeing our bowl game hopes go down the drain and I'm trying my hardest to carry this program where there are some amazing bright spots like Joel Johnson who got that TFL and on this play they caught it. I need Fred Miller to explain how he was not able to get this interception and on their first and goal play they ran to the outside where he misses the tackle. Well to make a bowl game I think we're going to have to take down Michigan in our last one because to come back we got a long way to go and we have got to get points before the half. There's about 30 seconds left on the clock and Anthony Weber did get open on his hitch route, but we have to call a timeout and that leaves us with just one remaining and we're only getting to midfield. The odds of getting another 50 yards in 24 seconds aren't good and I'm not sure what it's going to take. We're going to have to thread the needle to Jackson McGowan, who honestly might declare for the NFL draft after how this year has gone. He is good enough to be there. And 12 seconds left in the second quarter now where we have gotten this throw off in time to Ernie Hicks, who did not get open, but the freshman still made the play and we're starting the third quarter with the ball. So that actually gives me a little bit of hope on second and one and a half back stretch to the outside back to Ryan Wilson should work out. And he definitely had a better freshman year than he's had a sophomore season, but we have thrown it a bit more and he is going to fight for this first down. Five minutes left in the third quarter now where we are going for the deep shot to Steven Arrington. And that was just to keep Western Kentucky on their toes. Now we're throwing to our offensive lineman. And why is he in as a tight end again? That drop sets us up with a third and 10 where there's no way they stick with Arrington, but the ball doesn't stick to his hands. And we have never run a fake punt in this series, but I'm so down bad for us to potentially get the win. And that just was not the right call. We would have been better off if we just gave it back to them and got a defensive stop. They shouldn't have gotten that catch. And here on first and 10, we didn't get in the hole with Steven Anderson. Drew Flynn couldn't make the tackle either. And it's looking like a backup quarterback's about to take us down where we aren't getting the interception. We should have had that in that situation. Ryan Wilson actually did a great job picking up his block there. But on the next play, we'd thrown an incomplete pass. And here on second and 10, we're going back to Steven Arrington. So hopefully we're building up a little bit of momentum. They stuck with our tight end, but we're going to wait and hit the crosser to Anthony Weber. And this entire drive, we've stayed in hurry up mode against them, but we finally gave a lot of our players a breather. Ryan Wilson is still out there and he takes it to the crib. All right. It gave me a little bit of hope, surprisingly, where they are not making that throw. And Fred Miller just got toasted. So we can admit if they didn't have a backup playing right now, we definitely would have given it up, but it's all good. It is third and four where the drag is open underneath and he runs almost out of bounds. I thought Katie Hutcherson was about to mess up, but because he didn't, their drive stays alive and we have to start guarding
the flat. Western Kentucky's offense is always a struggle to stop, but Jamar Robinson has forced a third and five where Conception just got burnt by Barry for the first down. We should know better than to run press man-to-man -man coverage against them, but I guess it'll be all right because all we can do is learn from our mistakes and on second and 10, there is not a quarterback spy out there, which isn't a very big issue. It's like they know whenever we're not prepared to stop the quarterback scramble and I don't even know what I'm doing with my user as they're in a second and inches situation, but the run commit paid off. Third and two to end the third quarter where we got into that gap and we make the tackle, holding them to a field goal, but we'll see if they actually take their points. And it makes sense for them to do that. We are trailing by 17 in the fourth quarter, so we have limited time to come back. And on a third and 10, it's man-to-man -man coverage, so we know that Anthony Weber's gonna burn it, but I'm sure they're gonna go back to zone after that, and that's a problem because it's much harder to pick up yardage then. After we got off to such a good start, I'm not quite sure what happened to our program, but everything seemed to go downhill, and we've gotta learn from that so the same thing doesn't happen next year, because I believe as we accumulate experience and recruits, we could win the MAC, and it's third and 21 where we are gonna have to force it over the middle of the field to Robinson for the first, but they're saying he was marked short as a fourth and inches, so we'll let Ryan Pace pick it up with his legs on this one, and we're still trailing by 17, so we need to score pretty quickly on them, which as of now is a work in progress. They went with man-to-man -man coverage on Jackson McGowan, and it's time to hand this one off to Ryan Wilson where he gets stopped, but I am confident in his ability to get in right here, and if I have to do it four times, I will keep handing it off. Well, now I'm a little concerned, so we are gonna go for the pass, but Ryan Pace didn't get it out, and the only way we stay in this game is if we're able to get a safety on them, but instead, 46 bounced it out, and of course, we couldn't come back from there, so to make a bowl game, we have to beat Michigan, and I think Brian Johnson is gonna be on the sidelines for that one, because even though we can't run the ball with Ryan Pace in the game, at least our receivers seem to do better, and it looks like because Eastern Michigan just lost to Northern Illinois, the Huskies are gonna make the conference championship over them, so even though we're struggling, our rivals are as well, and I understand that this could get ugly quick, so we're gonna try and keep a slow tempo for as long as possible. Starting out on defense, Michigan hits us with a wide receiver screen where Frederick Moore just ran backwards. Hopefully we can bring him down in the backfield, which we eventually do. And I wanna note that the Wolverines right now are on the verge of missing the college football playoffs. So an upset today would be a massive deal. Joel Johnson didn't get in in time. And we're gonna try to shoot the gap, but it doesn't work out. Cole Cabana is gonna take it and go for another first. So we gotta hope that we figure it out eventually. He's taking another handoff where Joel Johnson misses the tackle, which means this is going for like 25 yards. And we showed a little bit of resistance at the beginning. So I'd love to start doing it again. Rodney Cronin got into the gap, but CJ Stokes trucked him. And this Michigan rushing attack on us has been absolutely brutal. We might as well run commit and just hope for the best, but I left the running back open and they've moved the chains again. So this has been a very well executed first drive from them and they're expecting to take us down, but I want to shock the world. So Ryan Pace is going to have to start completing his passes and on the run, he misses again. He's always so cold to open up these games and we have the hitch open, but it went towards our tight end instead. They intercept it and I am not even surprised about it. It was honestly a solid pass if intended for our tight end, but it wasn't and Morgan's going to break free for another one. So we've already given up two receiving touchdowns and we have got to start moving the ball with some completions where we get a few, but it's still third and six. They're running man-to-man -man coverage. Our corner route gets open and thank goodness Steven Arrington made a play. I want to stay in this game for as long as possible, but I forgot that we can't run play action at all. They also got in a blitz here. So it is third down and 18. Dante Moss has opened up the seam and I have not seen him for a bit, but I'm glad that he's getting back out there on the field, making a difference for us. Ryan Pace rolling around and floating this one perfectly, but Ernie Hicks decided not to drag either of his feet. And this is the one scenario where play action could work. Ryan Wilson did get a few, but it is still third and seven where we're going to go for our crosser over the middle of the field and Hicks held on. I'm actually starting to feel kind of confident. He continues to get open, but not on that play. So we're going for it here on second and 10 where I'm going to put it right into the end zone and Clemens dropped it. That was actually a really good read as well. So it's frustrating, but it'll be all right. And it looks like Brian Johnson is out there on the field right now, but Ryan Pace is going to return soon. And I'm sure he will to start the second quarter. However, it's still Brian Johnson out there and I'm just going to run with him and try and make it into the end zone where the freshman quarterback fell in against the Wolverines. And it is time to see if our defense can keep up versus Michigan. Rodney Cronin got out to the ball, but we have had trouble stopping their rushing attack and Ingram, their quarterback, is going to scramble for the first down plus a little bit more. Now I'm going to have a quarterback spy out there on every single play and I'm hoping it makes a difference, but my fears were not going to generate enough pressure on them. So we'll see. It's now third and three where we could have stopped them, but we missed. And it is really difficult to get Michigan off the field harder than I expected, but we just got a sack and surely they're not going to pick up 17 yards over the next two plays. I'm trusting our defense, but Steven Anderson cannot get back to Joyce, unfortunately. And I feel like if we could have generated some pass rush versus Peter Ingram, things could have been differently there. But instead, he puts them back up by two possessions and Brian Johnson is still out there on the field. So we have been going back and 
and forth between him and Ryan Pace. And hopefully somebody can get open on the second and 12 where we have him. And that's another catch from Arrington. Brian Wilson has struggled to get it going versus the Wolverines. But we've been passing first down, so it hasn't mattered. And once again, they leave the drag to Steven Arrington open. It's been a solid drive. And with the read option, I feel like we should have gotten a first down. But Kersey just decided not to block this guy. And now it is fourth down where Jackson McGowan is going to get open on the Michigan defense. But I feel like it shouldn't have even come down to that. Now we're going for the deep post over the middle of the field to Dante Moss. And hold on, Brian Johnson is putting a clinic on versus Michigan as he is yet to throw a single incompletion. And I hope that I'm not jinxing him. But of course I did. Third and 10 now where the corner route isn't going to get open, but we're still going to try to force it to Ernie Hicks. And I got to say, this is a very bad freshman mistake. We could have been getting it back within seven points, but instead the Wolverines are going to hold us to a field goal. And if we're not careful, they could also score a touchdown in the first half. But luckily they just ran out the clock. And I don't know where Ryan Pace is, but I'm not complaining because Brian Johnson's been solid. He's seven for nine now, and we could have our crosser over the middle of the field, which he hits to Weber. So I don't know where this was in his debut, but he's actually performing really well. Steven Arrington's running backwards after that catch. And halfback slip screens used to be our specialty. We've kind of gone away from running them this year, but we're continuing to move the chains and we need to get a playbook that has more option runs in it. At least if we're going to use Brian Johnson going forward, I'm not sure. And it'll really be up to you all in the comments and on a community poll what we do. We are going to find Steven Arrington for the touchdown. And I feel like we're playing best with him at QB, but Ryan Pace has done so much for the program and deserves to start as a senior. So I'm not quite sure what to do with this jet sweep. They're actually going to take it for a first down. And we're not having any luck at all when it comes to stopping the Wolverines offense. But we really shouldn't because we're only a 70 overall team. It's year four. And here on third and eight, I'm usering with Drew Flynn. They're going to find somebody open on our defense though. Are you kidding me? Samaj Morgan catches another one and we had so many zones over there. But now I'm noticing that Ryan Pace is back out there on the field. He did complete this pass, but I still want to put Brian Johnson back in the game. And I want to see how he finishes off the rest of this because he's the only reason that we've even gotten to this position. And I'm curious if it's a fluke or he could actually be this good. That's a great throw to Steven Arrington. So I'm noticing that those two are starting to build up a lot of chemistry and I think he's going to force it to him, but it's going to pay off and it's dropped into a pick. Are you kidding me right now? That was our chance to come back. We literally had a touchdown and the junior had it in his hands, but then let it slip. So we're going to be very aggressive run committing here and it's not working. A bowl game is literally on the line for us right now. There's a flag on this play and I think I was offsides, which is exactly what the ref is saying, but they're just going to decline it. And on first and 10, Caban is taking this one for what looks like another 10. So my frustration with this team continues to build. Peter Ingram sensed the blitz there and it was a smart move by him to scramble out of the pocket. But I'm just hoping that he makes one mistake at some point and we did not miss both of those tackles. Uh-oh, this could be going to the house for another Michigan touchdown. And I'm being very risky by run committing on this next one, but it worked out. So maybe that's what we need to do to stop Michigan. On second and eight, they're gonna try and scramble and they were able to stumble, but they didn't gain any yards in the process. So it's time to get our third down stop where Joel Johnson got stopped and they have somebody open. I don't even know what type of defense Rodney Cronin is playing here, but we now find ourselves down by 18 and we got it out quick to Ernie Hicks next, but I highly doubt it's going to make a difference. We are struggling and there is the interception from the freshman. Rolder has his shoulder pads high and he also has some hops on him. And I'm really curious about who's going to develop more in the off season. Steven Anderson just didn't play his own. But to end this video, we're going to get a decent idea of who our starting quarterback is going to be next season because we're going to go through training results and I'm run committing, but Michigan decided to pass instead. So I am stunned that we held them. Steven Anderson shoots the gap and we're going to keep it within three possessions. But in the second half of the season, we've been averaging two picks a game and Brian Johnson got hurt on that sack. So we have Ryan Pace back out there where he throws another interception and I'm not even surprised. I'm ready to get into the off season, but it looks like Brian Johnson's going to have one more drive where he is going to try to escape the pressure, which he did a good job of doing. And that's what I want from a quarterback, but I don't know if his accuracy is there yet. He also doesn't have the experience that Ryan Pace offers us going into his senior year next year, but he does have youth, which means we could develop him as he has three more years with us and I really don't know what I'm going to do. I thought this was going to be the year we potentially won a bowl game with Grand Rapids, but instead we're going to go into the off season early to see what happens with training results and maybe Brian Johnson's able to throw for one more touchdown before that, but we should also give Ryan Wilson a chance to score and he has not had many of those. I feel like we were bound to have a disappointing season since we had been improving so much, but now it is fourth and one where we're going to pitch it or fumble it away. What was that from Brian Johnson? Don't tell me they're about to score on us again. This is ridiculous. They're taking it back to the house and I don't want to talk about it. Obviously, we got embarrassed by Michigan and I'm not sure I can even call this a rivalry yet, but one day we will take them down in the big house and I hope that people
Peter Ingram isn't young. Well, it looks like he's a freshman, so that is bad news, but I don't think Brian Johnson did that bad. And we gotta get him a playbook where he can run the option more, but at least he fed Steven Arrington well. A 5-7 and seven season means that we're starting the offseason early, and Northern Illinois won the last MAC championship, and they're right back in it for the second year in a row. So I was hoping that they were gonna struggle, and they actually did, as they're gonna lose by 14 points, which is awesome. A team from the other division's gonna win the conference instead. And I have to mention that Steven Anderson led the country in tackles while Joel Johnson finished fifth in sacks because we needed to have a positive takeaway from this year. And how did an Iowa player win a Heisman Trophy? Their offense figured things out while ours didn't, having 25 interceptions, but Ryan Pace did throw less than last year while also having less touchdowns. He regressed, and Ryan Wilson did as well, even though he got even more carries this season. I mean, I'm happy our new receivers stepped up, but we didn't get the results that we needed, and I think we gave up even more sacks this year. It's hard to see the positives when we went 5-7, and seven, but this was by far the most sacks that we've ever generated as a team, and Michigan made the national championship again, so like last year, I'm hoping that they lose, but it makes it not as upsetting that we got blown out by them, and the fact that their 78 overall quarterback led them to this big of a win scares me. The Wolverines are going to be good for the next few seasons, so it could be a long time before we beat them because Cole Cabana is only a junior as well, and one of our in-state rivals has won a national championship. Well, there is some good news as Jackson McGowan is not declaring for the NFL draft, but we're losing some household names like Chase Durham, Andrew Cardi, Jamar Robinson, Robert Kimber, and Ricky Gamble, while also seeing Victor Taylor and Colby Butler hitting the transfer portal, but I'm gonna try to at least get Colby to stay and he doesn't want to. We went out and signed the 38th best class in the country, so I can't blame him, but we have to win a bowl game next season so we can start to recruit better players, and I think this is the first time that our athlete position has been this week, but Terrell Smiley can't do much. We did pull in a couple of crazy fullbacks though, and Alan Brown is only a 74 halfback while being a 76 overall tight end, so we're gonna have him develop over there alongside Thomas Jones, and honestly, Luis Miller can just stay a fullback for us. Now, one thing we are gonna struggle with is our depth at the linebacker position, so I'm very glad that I recruited a couple of strong safeties that aren't terrible over there, and Adam Evans is gonna be playing right outside linebacker for us, where we might as well also move Terrell Smiley over there because we just need some depth. Now it's time for the most game-changing part of the offseason, and with these training results, I am seeing a lot of positive things, which is good. It looks like Brian Johnson is three overalls worse than Ryan Pace, and the senior has 86 throw power and throw accuracy, while Brian Johnson's didn't increase at all, but he is a sophomore, so let me know who we should start next year. And I'm disappointed Anthony Weber didn't improve much, but Dante Moss went up eight overalls, where we always knew that this kid was going to be a big part of our offense. One thing that is pretty disappointing, though, is our DBs didn't improve that much, especially Steve Anderson, who I would have loved to see go up a ton. And this is the first year that we have to actually cut players, so I think we're going to have to say goodbye to 6'6", Brett Jackson, who I was so excited for, and then a junior right guard that was never going to get any playing time. It's definitely been a grind, but going into Season 5, we've put together a pretty respectable roster, and make sure to leave any feedback that you have for this series and who you think we should start in the comments.